What's up? No, nah, you don't need headphones. We don't need headphones while we're going. Uh, da, 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 bada, de, muddy, muddy, uh. All right, I think we're live. Oh, baby. <laughs> you might want to, uh, yeah, get the microphone there for you. <clears throat> All right, boys. Oh, it's go time. So we got, oh, okay, we're live. We got 37 people in here. What's up? <laughs> what's going on, Buttercup? YZTC, what's up, man? 20K? Fucking fly right there. Yeah, we hit the big 20. We did it. Thanks to you guys. Let me know if you guys can hear me fine. Oh, alien, what's up? Mm, bum, bum, bum. This guy goes, been watching for a while now. Um... And AO for your success, brother. I'll keep watching and liking all that I can for you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. We're gonna let the we're gonna let the uh we got 58 people in here. We're gonna wait a little bit until we really get cooking. Just gonna say what's up to all you right now. Let the show bum 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 living on your terms. Damn right. Damn right. Chris, what's up, dude? Thanks, man. 20k. It's unreal. It's unreal. Actually, real fast, uh, so funny. So I was on TikTok. I was posting something on TikTok, trying to post more short form. And uh, all of a sudden, I see at the top of the, the phone, it says, Jack Morgan followed you. And I'm like, how the hell did I follow myself? So I click on the profile, and somebody made a, a, a fan account. Yeah. And uh, they're, they're posting more than me. The guy's, the guy's beating me at my own game. It's classic. Yeah, so I thought that was hilarious. Uh, but, but what's up, Jim? Fuck a lot, Buckers, my boy. Leo, what's good, man? How you doing? How you doing? We got Eddie Money in the building. What's up, player? Got a lot of people in here. Got Brian Shannon. What's up? My middle name's Brian, if you didn't know that. Brian with an I. Yeah. Chuck Nasty, what's up, Big Daddy? Stomp the Elites, one of the original Patreon members. Oh, yeah, yeah. We actually just hit 50, uh, 51 members on the Patreon. I'm totally stoked. I'll eventually start posting there, I promise. It will happen. <clears throat> All right, we almost got 100 people in here, and then I'm going to start ranting. I got a th few things I want to rant about before I uh, send out the link for you guys. If you're new to the live stream, basically... This is my boy Taco. Okay, he's co-captain. All right, show him a little respect, um, <laughs> or else. Um, but if you're new here to the lives, basically, I'm gonna put out a link in the chat, and as long as you have a phone with internet connection, which I assume you do because you're watching this, um, you can just click the link and you can jump on and talk your shit. Uh, what's up, Matt? He goes reactor online, sensors online, weapons online. Okay, cool. Uh, what's up, Tim? Got a bunch of people in here. It's looking good. Got my boy Leonard in here. I have to get his ass on the live stream. Get real depressing later. Uh, ba -bum, ba -bum. Wow, we got a lot of people. I'm, talk, I'm about to let you man this real fast. All right, we got 100 people deep. You guys know what time it is. Buckle up. <laughs> All right, <laughs> so we got uh, let's get the show cooking. We got five hot ones from FPSD. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. He goes, uh, how are you going to do live during the Niners and Philly game? All good. C congrats, brother. Keep it up. Yeah, I, I can't compete with professional sporting events. You know I what I mean? Know you're making yeah. The pick. yeah. I mean, guys, it's either me or football. All right. And I get it. Choose football. You know what's funny? You know what I realized recently? I never understood uh, when people yell at the TV about sports games oh yeah yeah i never understood it until i started betting on the super bowl with people that i used to bartend i used to bet with on the super bowl with this one guy every year and i don't care about sports so i would just let him pick any team he wants i'd be like yeah do 50 bucks pick the team and i'd win every year four years in a row yeah this guy will shout out to him if he ever comes across this channel 
Um, and the last time I took a hundred from him, he stopped playing me. And I'm like, I don't even know what I'm doing. But I realized if you, even if you just have 50 bucks on the game, I understand why people are yelling at the TV. They're really going, no, fuck, 50 bucks. Damn it. <laughs> That's really, you know, and the, the other guys are like going, yes. They're freaking out, you know. I haven't really workshopped the bit, but I have noticed that with sporting events. Now I understand why people are always yelling. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If that makes any sense to you guys. I mean, I'd be yelling at the TV if I was losing $500. Alberto says, what's up to talk? What's, what's up, Alberto? You know, you know how we do. But, uh, yeah, before I send out the link, I just got to let you guys know I've been back at, uh, for those of you who don't know, I also have a regular job besides this. It's actually turned, my regular jobs turned into my side hustle compared to the YouTube uh, revenue. Thanks to all you guys who watch and support my shenanigans. I appreciate all of you. Um, but yeah, I've been at it like seven days a week for like the last month. Dude, not cool. Not cool. No. It's, it's, I was working seven days a week before that, but like doing this doesn't really feel like work. It's not like draining, but now I'm working like four days a week at the restaurant and then doing this on top of it. And I'm just like, Oh my, like it's necessary. I, you got to do it, but it won't be forever. But man, I got to tell you that it is, it's catching up. It's, it's not cool. What do we got here? Um, Eddie money. Yeah. So I don't know. Ta Cause taco has been on seven days a week too now. And, um, it's, it's, uh, it's a big adjustment. I got to tell you, it's, it's, it's not cool. Um, but it's necessary here. Scroll down. I don't know how to scroll on that. Two fingers. Oh, on that with two fingers. Yeah. Better call George. Thanks for the 30 hot ones. $30. I am big money. Wow. Bet it all on God black. George. God damn. God damn. It's not goddamn. It's got. God damn. God damn. God, God damn. damn. God damn, boy. He goes, yeah, uh, it will be an honor to promote you on my YouTube channel. Love you for your authenticity. Oh, stop it, George. <laughs> Get me all started. <laughs> Unreal. Yeah. Um, if you want, I'm going to put the link out here in a moment. Uh, I got one more little rant to do before I pass out the link for you guys to jump on. Here, go back to Georgie boy real quick. Yeah. Call George. All right. Um, yeah, George, if you want, man, hop on the channel. I don't know what your channel's about. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll figure that out. I guess you didn't have to click back on him. But thank you for the 30 bucks, man. That really means a lot. Seriously. I'm uh, going to pay to rent today. I'm going to pay to rent today. Mm -hmm. Oh, this guy's cool. This guy right here, Alienated TV. If you guys, uh, this guy's got a pretty cool channel. He does the women uh, dating stuff. Um he, this guy pulls like massive numbers. I don't know how he does it. He's doing something. You got to share me some of your secrets. He'll post like once a month, just 150K views on a video. I'm like, what's this guy doing? Hmm. He's, he knows something I don't. That's for sure. Be your um, way. But he hit me up when I had like maybe 3,000, 4,000 subscribers. And he said a bunch of kind words. And here we are now. Um, so I appreciate that. You know, having faith in me. But anyways, I got one, one little thing I got to bitch about for a second. So I was helping out a friend uh, who was staying with, with us here and um, <laughs> very cheap rent. I was charging him 700 a month flat. That's it. Everything included. And um, I don't know if you guys are aware of the state of the economy. That's a pretty solid deal. Very much. <laughs> very much. Yeah. So, so basically... Um, I had put my dad into a retirement home and so I had a, a bedroom open up and I said, look, you could take over this bedroom, uh, 700 a month. Uh, but there's two rules. Can't smoke weed in the house. Pretty simple. Go on the porch, go in your car, go to the neighbor's house. I don't care where you smoke it. Just don't do it in the house. Uh, you know, cause I don't really smoke weed, so I don't want to smell. And, uh, so then my other rule was, is you can't have your girlfriend over here all, all the time. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that one doesn't translate good to the people. No, I, I, I know this sounds messed up. It's not like I don't want him to get laid. I, I care about it. I care. I care about no, just out of context. Like, yeah. No girls. Allowed. No, no girls allowed after 11 or in general. Um, uh, it does sound messed up. It no, I know, but out of context. <laughs> well, look at the time 
you got three dudes living in a house, right? Okay. Now imagine if I bring my girlfriend over, he brings over somehow he met the other night down at the, at the learning annex. Oh, yeah. And then, <laughs> and then, you know, th this other guy brings over his girlfriend, That's six people deep. You know, that's a lot of people, man. Um, so, so those were my two rules. Um, you know, and he was trying to get back on his feet and save some money. So he, he wasn't having that. And so he decided to just go move in with his girlfriend who also lives with three other people. So he basically just went from one place and he moved into another place with even more people. And, um, they, they really haven't been dating that long, maybe six months, not even, which is a terrible decision. Um, so anyways, me and me and uh, taco here, were like, oh man, that's, that's not a smart move. Uh, no offense. We hope you guys are you know, happy ever after and all that. But uh, so it's been about what, like two months now, three months? Yeah, about two. Okay, so it's been about two, three months. And so this is the second time now that he's, so he hit me up the other day. And he's all freaking out because he feels trapped and he's got nowhere to go. And of course, he hasn't saved any money, um, which I'm just appalled by that because he makes really good money. It doesn't make any sense. It's like, what are you doing with your cash? Uh, and this also ties into the seven days a week. I'm gonna get somewhere with this. So he hits me up the other night, freaking out because he's got nowhere to go. He doesn't have parents, you know, um, his other best friend, which is our mutual best friend just got married. So there's no way he's moving in with them. They just got married. He, that ain't gonna happen. So I'm basically the only other guy he's got. So he hits me up and he's like, dude, if things go south, you think I could, I can move back in. So I don't know if this sounds mean or not, and I hope he doesn't watch. He ain't never going to watch this. Um, it's the one time. He, though. Yeah. If you have one time, he decides one to watch. Time. I love you if you're watching. But um, so he's like, you think I could possibly move back in with you? And I was like, look, dude, you could come. And this is the funniest part. The couch that's in the other room is actually his couch. He left it here. So I said, you could stay on your couch for a while, but I can't have you move back in here. Like I'll, I'll hold him down for a little bit, but, uh, I mean, dude, look, he had the opportunity to stay here. Uh, good people who are moving forward, trying to, you know, stack their bread and get ahead in life. Uh, we also like to have a good time. So it's not like a bad place to live. And then, um, yeah, he just like threw it all away to go move in with some chick. He just, he, you just met her. You know what I mean? Like you, you barely know each other. And, um, and now he's already calling me back two months. Um, anyways, I don't know. I feel bad. I don't know how I should kind of move forward with it. Like we really first, I really like it. Just being me and you. It's nice. It's, it's quiet. It's awesome. It's quiet. It's really great. It's clean. We have a guest room now. People want to come over, you know, I'm snuggle up. Yeah. It's just, you know, like it's really I feel bad, but, uh, you know, he had, I gave him the option already. Uh, I don't know. You guys let me know in the chat here if I'm being an asshole or not. I'll, I'll take him in for a couple weeks, but I mean, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like he blew it. He blew his opportunity. A couple weeks is definitely going to turn into a couple months. Yeah. Ago. There's no such thing as a couple weeks. You guys no. already know. Uh, staying up late. This guy, I've seen you've been binging some videos. I've seen you in the comments. Um, there's been a lot of comments lately too. So if I haven't gotten back to your comments yet or your DMS on Instagram, I will get there. Okay. I'm on seven days a week here. I'm one man. Um, thanks for the 10 bucks. He goes, love the show. Keep being genuine, brother. This channel is about to blow up. Just watch. Stay awesome. Jack. Thanks dude. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, you know, people keep telling me the channel is going to blow up. And in my opinion, I'm like, I'm, I'm like King Tut's cousin. I'm like Johnny Tut right now with just with 20. Johnny Tut. Yeah, with 20K. I'm like, dude, we made it, you know? Anyways, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and send out the link. If you guys are new to the live, I'm going to pop a link in the chat. If you want to hop on, I'm going to drill you with some questions. You could ask me questions. We'll just have a good time. And we'll, we'll, bring the, uh, we'll bring the conversation somewhere. Uh, we got another five, five hot ones. I'm going to throw the invite out right now. One moment. Boom, boom. I'm going to pop it in the chat here. All right, and the link is live. Whoa, uh, Major Major Muffalo. That's a good name. Thanks for the five bucks, man. <laughs> Major Muffalo. Major Muffalo. Tonight on Major Muff. 
Um, here, scroll down a little bit. Though. I think we got another. Uh, oh, got a Jackson Cagle coming in hot with a crispy 20 from downtown. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I got a little That's intense. Johnny Cagle's uh, youngest brother. No, it's not. I know. Oh, I'm about to say. We know a Johnny Cagle. And a Jacob Cagle. And a Jacob Cagle. So Jackson Cagle would have just made all the sense. And I used to call Cankles Cagles. All right, True so story. All right. Oh, we got jo Whoa, we got our first guest of the night here, ladies and gentlemen. Coming all the way from uh, somewhere. Colorado. Yeah, I think. All right. Jordan Wolf. We got Jordan Wolf holding here, ladies and gentlemen. He What's is good? a strapping young gentleman who has seemed to turn his life around for the better. He is... I want to Jordan uh, real quick backstory. Me and Jordan, we've known each other. What? How long you think? 16, 17, 18 years. Well, he's frozen. Not oh, good, not dude. God. Not cool. Yeah, be true. not cool. Man. Yeah. Oh, Joe, no. Jordan, Jordan, you're lagging. Hold on. Hold on. We can't hear you. Okay. All right. Try it here. again. I'll be back. I'll be back. All right, come back in come on when back. you're ready. You get back in here, brother. I'm waiting for you. Um, but anyways, back to uh, Johnny Cagle's brother he doesn't know about here. Jackson mm -hmm. Cagle, I also saw you just join the, the Patreon, brother. I really appreciate that. I sent you a message on there um, saying thank you and that I love you. And that I'm going to be here for you in your darkest hour. I didn't say any of those things, but I did say thank you. It says I'm supposed yeah. to be spring cleaning, Jack. You should get get to it. Yeah, but they want to watch this instead. You could clean and listen. You don't need to watch. Um, yeah, but anyways, we'll get Jordan back on here, huh? Let me send the link out again. You know, we're not at the point yet. Eventually, we're going to get at the point where there's so many people popping in on this. We can't keep up. But right now, we don't have anybody in the queue. So anyone who wants to get this party started, links, links in the chat. Just dropped it again. Should I? I should probably drop the link inside the description next time, huh? I'd probably be smart. Probably, I'd probably be yeah. smart. Um, let's see what else. What other com questions we got here while we're waiting for somebody to jump in and uh, get the show started? Shout out to Dustin, Dustin for life. What's up, brother? How you been, man? Um, KTG says success is going to get to Jack's head, and he's going to forget about all of us OGs. Never. Wait, Ed Bassmaster. Right. Um, goddamn, goddamn, God. Damn, God. Um, damn. no, I, I, I don't think it will, but time will tell. We'll find out. Um, I, I don't think so. Hey, I mean, I'm 34 years old, and I've, you know, I, I think it's better when people make it later in life. Um, got uh, I'll, Enos Lapinas. Oh, Ennis is back, or Enos. I think Ennis sounds better. You could just put a P in the front of that. That'll like sound Dennis good. Without the D. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. My name's Dennis. It's like Dennis without the D. <laughs> Wait, what was the name we said? Oh, uh, oh Jevelyn. Yeah, yeah. Some chick named Evelyn. I was like, oh yeah, it's like Jevelyn without the J. She was like, yeah. That's how we were introducing. Her. We're like, this is Evelyn. It's like Jevelyn, but without the J. But that stuck. Remember? Last next time I saw her, she's like, I am a Jevelyn. I'm like, that's oh, me. Okay, that's Jevelyn. Um, thanks for the five big ones, Ennis. I hope your face is feeling better. Uh, and it, you guys knew that are new here. Ennis got his ass kicked by a uh, five foot three, uh, <laughs> or oh, ninja. He goes, it's rough out here, man. My transmission exploded on I ninety five. Uh, and a gear ripped through the cab of my car and tore my leg wide open. He goes, damn, I'm taking out. Jeez, L. Dennis. What's wrong with you? Dennis, put, Get come it on. together. Jesus. I thought you were going to come back and tell us about the yeah, redemption. Yeah, I thought fight. you were like going to come back and your life's changed. No. Dude, you're just taking hits, buddy. Wow. Um, and, still, and still got a helping hand. Still got. And he's still giving back to the community. Good God. Good things coming to you, good, Dennis. Good things. Good things. I, I, I see Big things coming in your future. Uh, hope your face healing up is going to be one of them. And your car getting fixed is going to be another one. All right, let's see what else we got. New subscriber here. What's up? Thanks for being here. Appreciate you. This guy goes, 
spring clean cdk goes spring cleaning in december that doesn't make any sense <laughs> yeah I didn't hey, what's up chuck that. nasty how you doing man did anyone hear about the attack on the u.s warship no we i haven't but uh a friend of ours named john just went off to the navy um apparently they've upped the age to go into the army up until what is it 41 or something yeah something yeah like you could be now you could be 41 and just join the uh a bunch of old cats. yeah the army the navy yeah so this dude how old is you he's like 39 no he's not how old is he he told me he was 28 john is not 20 i know but i was like no seriously he's and then not he was like, 20. well he's like i'm no 28 way. and i was like dude jack told me you were like 39. i know chinese people age very well but they, oh. it, no way you couldn't tell if this guy was yeah 21 or 40. he's trying you know chinese japanese Chinese. i'll age like fine wine yeah yeah uh ba -ba. jack read my comment i'm famous ktg what's up one million soon <laughs> You should do a Kill Tony show at the mothership. Yeah, you know what? I was actually telling Taco about this. I've been scheming. So I've been trying to get back into stand-up. Um, I did a show recently, which I was going to post uh, the clip. It was just a three-minute set, but it went really well. And um, I filmed it, but, but I filmed it with my phone. I didn't want to be rude and bring my camera with me because it was like some kind of they said they were filming some kind of a YouTube show with it. So I was like, ah, let me not step on anybody's toes. Um, so I didn't bring my camera, but I ended up filming it with the phone. But the quality is such crap that I honestly don't feel comfortable posting it. Um, but uh, my, my goal is, is check this out, is I'm going to suck it up and work seven days a week here up until uh, April. And in May, I'm going to quit my job. And then by then... I should be hood rich Ricky uh, John one. You know what I mean? Um, and then I'll be able to quit my my regular job. And then my goal is, is I'm just going to start hiking it out to Texas like once a month and just go start hitting. Because in Texas and Austin, it's like a huge stand up explosion of people uh, like all the stand up stuff going on. And so, yeah, my goal is to try and get on Kill Tony. We'll see what happens. It's going to be a mission, but uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go for it. You know, I'll see what we'll see what's up. So All right. So we still got if this is just to really get the really get the ball rolling. What are your thoughts on recent aliens? <laughs> aliens and from uh yep, they're all too real, I guess. Uh my thoughts on aliens. Uh, you know, I don't know, man. I don't know. I really don't know anymore. I'm sure other light uh, I'm sure there's some kind of crazy stuff. I don't know. I don't know if they're, I don't know if everything is, um, how do I say this without getting too cuckoo? Um, like did Lance Armstrong really, you know, ride a bike to the moon or not? I'm not sure. <laughs> he All hates right, that wait. one. Um, <laughs> this one um, wants to know what the, going back to that really quick. What's the name of Joe Rogan? Oh, uh, it's called the mothership. Yeah. I know aliens and stuff, but, um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about aliens in outer space. I, I, I really have no clue. Uh, but I, I, I wouldn't put it past it. You know, we got whales the size of like three story buildings. So, you know, I, I don't know. All right. We got octopus. Yeah. I mean, there's some wild stuff out there. Those man. are aliens. Yeah. Like octopus. Yeah. Have you ever seen a you got like a brain in every yeah. leg or something? Have you even been in the ocean snorkeling? Some trippy stuff down there, man. Um, I'm sure some of it's real. Who knows? Men in black could be more than true. We actually watched that recently. And we were saying to ourselves, like, I don't know, man. It's a bit bit suspect. A bit, you know? Yeah. A bit I mean... suspicious. You know, like I like whenever whenever somebody tries to talk to me about like uh conspiracy theories or like you know, lizard people are running the world, you know. Um I just kind of go, I could see that, you know. I own it. Yeah, you got to stay open to it all. Yeah. Um, yeah. Real quick, um, Matt wants to know, how do I come on live? How do I come on? Oh, Max, my boy. What's up, brother? I'm going to put the link in the chat. All you do, Max, is click the link. Or anybody who wants to come on, that we're getting a late start, but that's fine. We can sit here and just talk. Um, you just click the link and you just pop on. Pretty, It's pretty simple. Um. But uh, it's like aliens are sparking off in the comments. Now. All right, let's get back to the yeah. But the lizard people, I had a guy one time. He was like, 
He's like, yeah, dude, I think lizard people are running the running the world. And I was just like, yeah, I owned an iguana once. He was a bit suspicious, if you ask me. So I, I get it. You know, I'm, I'm pretty open to it. Would you have sex with an alien if it looked like uh, uh aboriginal woman? I mean, yeah, I mean, maybe, I don't even you know, know. What aboriginal, an aboriginal. <laughs> aboriginal. Well, I got to bust out a dictionary or something. Jeez, like, Jesus Christ. Real quick. Get a thesaurus out. Uh, um, wait, Ennis just said something. Click on him. You were just oh, on him. Yeah. All right. Back to Ennis, the guy who has been getting Ennis just got his ass kicked by an alien who appeared to be a small Mexican man. He goes, I'm hanging in there, bro. Face is feeling a little better. Um, uh, but bum. Then I go to buy a car, so I ain't got to ride the city bus. Then this happens because I'm stitched up bad. Wow. Unreal, oh, man. man. Show some Unreal. love to Ennis, everyone. You know, just everybody pray for Ennis. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know, man. The, the, I don't know. Honestly, I think a lot of the stuff with the aliens and just outer space in general and all this stuff, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to believe. I really don't. You know, I don't want to get all conspiracy cuckoo on you guys, but I, 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 I don't know. I think if we were going to outer space, um, <clears throat> I think they'd be selling tickets to that uh, at this point. Well, let's see. Let me see this one right here. I don't know about aliens or Jeepers Creepers, Dogman, Goatman, the Ocean of Strange cre cre uh, Creatures, Lizard People, and the Biden administration. Yeah. Who knows? You know, honestly, it would make so much more sense if another life form was running everything. At least yeah. that would make sense. I'd be like, oh, I get it. I get it. You know, if it was a bunch of cold blooded lizards, reptilians running the world, I, mean, I get it. The cold blooded. It makes it makes total sense. Oh, yeah. You know, that would make more sense than, you know, uh, uh, than what's going on now. Thank Whiskey you. Tango Fox Foxtrot, also another Patreon member. Appreciate you. Millions of aliens vote every election. Oh, like, like yeah, illegal aliens. Like illegal. Like, yeah, I, I get yeah, it. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, write that down. Da -da -ding. I get it. Uh, Burger King coming out with a bug whopper combo. Yeah, there's a lot of bug eating talk. You know, like you hear about oh, that? Did you, see in, did you see in like um, some part in Africa, they make mosquito burgers. Like they... Kills. That makes sense. Like each each burger has like forty thousand mosquitoes in it, and they shape it into a patty, and it's literally a mosquito burger. I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> yes, I don't like it. Yes, yeah, so nobody's clicking the link here. I'm gonna go ahead and drop it for the eighteenth time. If nobody wants to come in, that's fine. It's all good. Um, it's all good. That's fine. We'll just sit here and read comments. We actually have not done that before, where we just sit here and read comments. So I'm cool with it. All right, Ennis needs to go fund me. Ennis needs to go fund me, yeah, with all the money he's been donating to the show, too. Um, what else do we got in here? Scroll it on down. What's this Federal Reserve talk here? What do we got here? Miles coming in hot. Uh, the Federal Reserve, being a private entity of the world's central bankers, should be, uh, should be taught to all. We've been misled and lied to about a lot. Yeah, you know... Um, you know, it starts early too. First, they lie to you about Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny. You know, they get you young. You know, and then uh, next thing you know, you grow up and it's it's all a lie. Um, I stop caring about aliens. If they're real, they can show up. Yeah, I agree with you. It's like just show yourselves already. Like cut the crap. Wait, cut the crap. It's, cut. it's crap. Uh, ba -ba -bum. what else we got here? We built cameras. If aliens offer you a one-way ticket to another galaxy, you're going. Yeah, I probably would be like, all right, I'll go. Let's are you check telling it out. Us we're going, or are they asking? If no, I think I think they're just making a statement. Like, yeah, I, I'd say you're probably right. Um, if someone was like, "Hey, man, you want to go on a trip to the stars?" I mean, I might say I probably wouldn't believe them. To be honest with you. Um, it'd have to be like one of those things in a movie where like somebody like gr reaches out and like grabs your shoulder. And the next thing you know, you like astro project out of your body. You have to be like one of those situations. Um, or they literally kidnap you, you know, um, they like force you to do it. We know what this means. 
Alien Broccoli honks to clear. Okay, dude, get to some real comments here. <laughs> like, 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 Jesus fuck? Christ. Thank you for being here, though. Appreciate the comments. <laughs> um, meanwhile, cats have everyone fooled, hiding in plain sight. Yeah, cats are strange, man. My cat be looking at some stuff sometimes, and I'm like, I'm like, what is she looking at? You know, it's like she's seeing a spirit or something. Uh, let's see what we got. Let me see. Hold on, hold on. Alberto goes, love the teacher epidemic video. Yeah, all the teachers uh, quitting. Well, you know what's funny is I ran into like the day after that, I was at this local bagel shop I go to, and I had two guys there that watched the channel, and they were like, hey, Jack, we watch your channel. And, uh, so it turns out one of the dudes was a retired teacher. Um, his name's Mike. Mike, if you're watching, what's up, brother? I remember your name. And uh, he was telling me that he ended up calling all of his old teacher friends and uh, they did some research. So apparently it is correct about the pension uh, to teach, at least in Florida, any teacher that starts after uh, the year 2022, no pension. So far. Yeah. It's like, what's the point? Like, why would I even show up to this? Um, bum, 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 bum. Ryan goes, I got a new development for you. Look up the Internet computer. It's a new blockchain uh, computing hosting platform native to the standard internet. It's like the internet had built-in hosting. Okay, I'll have to check that out. It's a lot for me to kind of soak in, but uh, yeah, we just had that Max guy. I don't know what happened. Yeah, nobody's that. joining in the the live. This is you know, it's cool. That's fine. What else we got? Oh, let's see here. When are you going to get a Spotify podcast? When are you going to get a Spotify podcast? Um, I don't know. Eventually, you know, uh, I'll figure it out. We got Jordan Wolf. Back. I'll get there. Uh oh, we got Jay Money in the building. We got somebody coming in, guys. All, All right. right, Jordan. Is Money. it working this time? It's working. You're live, dude. You're live. That's good. Jordan. All right, for everybody in the chat. Jordan, um, where are you hailing from, and how old are you? Buddy? Thirty-three years old, Las Vegas, Nevada. Oh, you're in Vegas wow. now. Wow, you live yeah, in there now. Yeah, here in Vegas, bro. Yeah, man. Wow. Okay. All right. That's awesome, man. I thought you were in uh, Wyoming or something like that. Yeah, I was in Wyoming for like five years out in Jackson Hole. Then I went to back to Florida actually for a little bit. I was in Orlando. Okay. And then uh, we came out here literally like right as the pandemic was about to end oh nice hey uh, yeah so so if you don't mind telling everybody i i haven't talked to you in forever man um so what yeah, are you no. doing so what do you do nowadays for uh for money uh i work at the casinos out here oh shit what are you uh you a dealer no i i work responding to guest complaints it's not that bad actually Oh, wait, so you just deal with people who bitch? Yeah, but I don't at the moment I don't even have to take phone calls. I'm more or less responding on like email and stuff. I can't really go into too much details, but it's it's real uh uh like simple but difficult because each each person has a different complaint or like a different situation that you have to deal with. So you have to figure out how to like work that person's situation out. But once you get like through the difficult ones, everything else is cake. Okay. I got you. So, um, hold on one second. This guy, Max, my boy. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Hey, I'm going to get, oh, oh, I just muted him. Hold on one second. I'm going to get to you in a second. I just want to say what's up. Hold on one second. For a moment. All right. Let me get back to Jordan for a minute here. All right. So, um, so, okay. So quick question. Like, if you don't mind me asking. So yeah, working bro. at this casino, do, do they pay pretty well for guest complaints or? They pay pretty decent. So pretty decent? I also, so I was a manager at Cosmo, the Cosmopolitan for a while. Okay. Uh, about two and a half years uh, and then MGM took over and I didn't want to be part of MGM. So I left. Gotcha. Uh, so now I'm at another hotel. Don't really want to say the name. So don't, don't, yeah, don't, you don't have to. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, but 
uh, they're they're going through a major redevelopment right now. So I'm watching the process. And my goal is to get into another management position so that I can eventually work for like a company like Forbes, where they send you around the world to like more or less secret shop hotels and like they pay you to go to these really nice hotels and stay there and tell them where they're doing good and where they're doing bad. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I have no idea how the hotel or casino business is. I've never worked in either one. So, you know, I mean, it's very similar to food and beverage. I mean, every hotel and casino has food and beverage in it. So it's, it's all, it's all the same stuff, man. It's very much like, you know, day to day, you get the same people who come in, you get the same clients that you're talking to and dealing with. Yeah. You're and building then, relationships. Exactly. And gotcha. it's, it's a huge, it's a huge like city when you talk about how many people come in, but it's a really small town with like the people who actually live and work here. So you get to know everybody, man. It's pretty crazy. Oh, that's awesome, man. All right, Jordan, I'm gonna get back to you in one second. I do have some questions yeah, too. More questions. For actually, you. I, oh, uh, well, I'm, you gotta I'm get rolling. To wake up this baby. So, oh, but I was going to say congratulations on the cat. Wow. I was going to ask you some more about that, but next time you come on, we can talk oh, about yeah, uh, becoming a dad. Yeah, I, I stay watching your shit, so I just want hey, to pop in and say what's good. Hey, dude, and next then, time yeah, you're, the, the switch next, got on here now. Yeah, yeah. Next time, hey, next time you're in Florida, man, hit me up. If I'm ever in Vegas, I'd love to see you, dude. Oh, for Big, sure, man. All right, brother. Thanks for popping on, man. I love you, all man. Right. Get uh, get that baby. Love you guys. Be <laughs> uh, thanks for the five bucks from Dave. He goes, I enjoy when you sprinkle in good life advice, save money, build for the future, stay healthy. Don't chase the short term. Yeah. Um, back to what I was talking about of my friend who used to, who decided to go moving with his girlfriend instead of staying and milking a good situation. Um, you know, not everybody's going to have the, uh, what discipline to do it. But anyways, we got Max here. Max, where are you hailing from, brother? How we doing? Can you hear me? Oh, we can hear you oh, loud yeah. and clear. Nice. I'm out in uh I'm right by Aspen. Okay. Colorado. So yeah. So if you don't so if you don't mind, um how old are you and what are you doing uh nowadays for uh you know to acquire dollar bills? Yeah, twenty nine. Uh from where you guys are from he's from florida i, I grew florida. up i grew up looking up to you guys actually but i didn't really ever end up crossing paths skating with you guys oh but, what, what uh, were you from uh, what city like i i grew up like watching like kinesis and stuff but i'm from north palm oh my god real quick kinesis. to just just to wow. fill people in on what he just said Ooh. so so he um Basically, there's this thing back when we were young. So I'm talking like I was 13. So this is 20 years ago, 21 years ago, before Shit. YouTube, before like right when MySpace was invented, basically. Um, there was this local skateboarder in our town who had the wherewithal to start his own website and post his own who is, videos. Who that? His name was Troy Ansley. I've talked about this guy on, on the show before. He's the same guy, if you guys remember me ever talking about a dude who was able to make his Nissan get 70 miles to the gallon. Um, <laughs> this is the same guy. This dude was like genius. Uh, but he started a website where skateboarders could post their videos to it. And we were kids. We we're, we're kids. This is before YouTube. It was actually <laughs> unreal. So the fact that you just brought that up brought me way back. Um, anyways, George with another 20, he says, how do I call in? Um, tell everyone to start making $500 a day. No BS. I promise. Yeah, sure. Come on in. I'd like to hear how to do that. Um, uh, click on the link. Uh, the, we're dropping a link in the chat and you just click the link and jump on, uh, Frank with the two bucks. He goes, I would join the live, but who wants to hear a CPA dude? We've had, we've had, uh, this other guy, Chris, a CPA comes in here all the time and, uh, harps yeah. on everybody about tax information. Jump on in, bro. Uh, but anyways, yeah, um, but, but back to Max. Back to Max. Yeah, back to me. Um, yeah. So I'm uh, doing private chef gigs right now. Yeah, how's that going? How's the uh, private chef business? It was cool. I missed Thanksgiving this year, and I always come home back to North Palm to spend that time with my family. Um, 
that's like the one time of the year I come home. Um, but this year I basically prepped out Thanksgiving for some billionaires out in Aspen who were too lazy to cook. Um, some so that billionaires. Was, that was a chill, like just quick flex, but yeah, I did like two families. Um, so basically all they had to do is reheat everything I prepped for them, which was like, so, so what is yeah. a, what is a private chef gig like that? Like, if you don't mind, like, I don't like prying into people's money, but we got to keep this interesting here. Um, like what is something like that pay? Mm, yeah. So I'm like, sure this, ha this house that. itself, like aside from the pay, like it had its own commissary, like kitchen, like a professional ass, like nicer than any kitchen that is in a, in restaurant? a restaurant in Aspen. Yeah. It's just like unbelievable. Um, wow. and then, yeah, basically on my own, it's like up to like 12, hundred bucks a night is like Very usually nice. that's pretty good money goes too <laughs> so it's decent but yeah i'm uh, about to settle down with a new just like regular gig here at a, a french spot just really simple traditional french french food okay they, prob they probably don't serve the french fries but um i'll yeah. be on the saute station whipping up fish you know how we do in florida okay I know. Uh, yeah and basically other than that um yeah i'm doing that also because benefits and <laughs> gives you a uh, free ski pass which um it's a 2700 seven hundred dollar ski pass for the season here out in aspen which is like probably the most expensive in the world that's awesome man fucking nuts. all right we're, so, yeah. we're, we're gonna get right enough back enough about me no, no, it's cool. We're going to get back to you. We got, oh, I got yeah. more stuff to ask you about stuff. He just wants to start a food truck. We'll get in that in a moment. Um, all right. We got better call George. Georgie boy. What's going on, brother? Hey, can you hear me? Well, we can hear you loud and clear, man. Where? Uh, how old are you and where are you hailing from? I'm in Virginia. I have an accent. I can hear I can that. I tell you all how to start making a lot of money. $500 a day. Easy. No bullshit. And basically the way you do it. All you need to do, you need to learn how, how to install TVs and to how to hang ceiling fans. And okay. Wait, wait, wait. Slow down here. So <laughs> install. Okay. Ceiling fans, I understand. Now, what do you mean by the TVs? You like mean like them mounting them on a wall? Yes, like on a TV mount. Okay. All right. So, okay. So what you're saying is, is ceiling fans... And TV mounting. Keep going. Yes. I just want to make sure I'm on the same page. Here. Yeah, you can learn it in literally in one day. There are a bunch of instructions on YouTube. And then after that, what you have to do, you have to register yourself as a handyman on the website Yelp or create like a business Facebook page. Okay. And then it's it's really simple. And then you're gonna have to start running ads. You're gonna have to buy ads. So what I do on Yelp, for example, if I spend $10 a day, I usually get one job of installing TV and I usually charge about $120 for a call. So if I want to make $500 a day, I need to spend $50 in ads. And then I have like 10 clients a day and you just choose geography next to each other in one city and you just go one after another after another and it's it literally takes you 20 minutes to install and 20 minutes to drive them back and forth and it's like easy 500 600 a day okay well that i mean that's probably a good skill even if you even if you just made uh even if you just made an extra 500 a week doing that the th i still think that'd be worth it um real quick to answer uh, that dude the ennis with the two bucks Thank you for that. The question about if I'm a millennial or whatever, I'm pretty sure I'm a millennial. I was born in 1989, so I could be wrong. You know, I'm pretty, sometimes I don't pay attention to a lot of stuff. You know, it took me forever to learn, um, like in politics, that the left side and the right side, I literally had no idea what either one of those meant for the longest time. And then I realized eventually right was uh, Republican. Is that right? Right, yeah. Republican. Yeah, right was Republican and left was Democrat. I had no idea. Sometimes I just don't care about certain things. Um, but yeah, I think I'm a millennial. I think. Are we millennials? 
I was born in 93. Yeah, we don't even know. I have no idea. We, we, yeah, we, we don't even, I don't even pay attention. I think boomers yeah. are like a, a. Yeah, I think that's like my mom, my dad. Yeah. Or like no, that's before boom, them. The boom, baby boomers. We don't know. Okay. Um, let us know. Yeah, you guys let us know. 89. Red pill, blue pill. Yeah, we're, we're some of that stuff. One's like left side, right side, man. I'm west side. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so uh, so George, so you're basically is that what you do for a living? You're a handyman? Oh, well, not anymore. I started the YouTube channel, it blew up. Actually, I do what what you do, basically. Okay, so so okay, on your YouTube channel, let me talk to you about this. Yeah. So so what's so by blow up? What do you mean? Like, uh, where are you at? Uh, give us some details here. You don't have to talk money because so, I know it gets. But where well, are you at subscriber wise? Like, how are you? Uh, how are you doing? I'm at fifty thousand subscribers, but I'm supporting you not because I want you to promote my channel. I genuinely like you. I watch your channel. But basically, oh, what I do, uh, what I do, I was w watching that guy struggling with women here in America, like especially yeah. this red pill stuff. And like I see what they teach, it doesn't work. And there is women are much, much simpler than what you guys making. And basically, oh, I yeah. made one I made one video saying that, all right, don't ever argue with women because like the second you don't understand women, imagine you are arguing with a 10 year old year old child. And now suddenly everything makes sense. This is why you try to prove her logically when you argue with your wife or with your girlfriend, you prove her logically. You take history in a, into account and she gives you some bullshit reason like i disagree you know what i mean but if you know you're dealing with a child that that is trapped in a adult body everything makes yeah, sense. yeah. Or, or like if you want to attract women you actually jack has it that's why i like you i've been saying from day one you don't need money or looks all you need to do it's it's all about your default emotional state incongruence how comfortable you are with women and you jack you're pretty successful with women and you have it because you're not trying to be someone who you're not you're no. like you are who you are you know what i mean and i said like the second you start acting like that you will see how it's your communications with them will be so easy but what you guys doing they they go on a date and they try to pretend to be richer than who they are better than who they are and women sense that and that's why like they start hating you you know what i mean that's why women like bad boys because we are who we are we don't give a shit you know what i mean so something that me and Taco, uh, I'm sure Taco's noticed this too, because um, what we like, I've never, I talk to everybody the same, whether it's a girl or a guy. I treat yeah, yeah, them, yeah, yeah you know, like, right? No, oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I, I think just doing that, just that alone, um, immediately it like breaks the the barrier of uh uh especially if you're treating a, a a pretty good looking woman like she's just a like she's just a, her name may as well be frank you know what i mean like you're just treating her yeah. like a regular person and i think that alone because i've gotten with some pretty good looking women and i've, I've wondered i've asked myself i'm like yeah I'm, a, I'm i'm like pretty decent looking i think but at the same time i'm like I was like, I don't know how I pulled that off, but I think it was just because it was like everyone else treats her like she's, you know, the hottest thing around, which she is. She's bad. But, you know, to me, I don't care if I'm going to hook up with you or not, um, especially if it's it's different. If you meet a girl and you're like, oh, I could be with her forever. Like, I'll literally risk my life. I'll marry this person. But like, if that's not the case, like there's no need to even even talk to them that like, other than talking to how you would talk to taco or or just the dude at the supermarket it's, it's like this so, so that's cool but so anyways back to you said you had fifty thousand subscribers yeah. on your channel yeah but before we go i want to say can i make a little remark about you what you just said yeah like for you it's easy to be who you are for me it's easy to be for who you for who i am but if a guy goes on a date for the first time with a hot chick he will be nervous. He won't be able to control it. He will always try to be someone who he's not. His pitch voice will go up. So it's mm. easy to say to be who you are. But I constantly notice that the guy would talk to me normally. Then the, my girl comes in who is hot and he would talk to her. Hi. And his voice goes up and she starts hating him right away. It's all emotional. But yeah, I agree with you 100%. <laughs> well, in that case, don't just don't date a super hot chick, you know? Um <laughs> <laughs> get get one that you you know you think's kind of not great 
you know, because then you're, I mean, that's, that's like, be realistic. Like Taco, do you want to date a supermodel? Um, um, no, I mean like long-term, she's going to be your wife, supermodel. I mean, that's the idea, but no, I think like in the end of the day, you no, want to just have a, I can't do you it. You want to have someone that's semi-average and then yeah, fall half in love with their physical and half in love with their inside like, yeah, for because, who they are. Dude. If you uh, get with a supermodel, you're only going to want to be with her just because she's hot. Yeah. And, then, and everyone's going to be looking at her. She knows she could do better than you. <laughs> that's that's exactly sure. what I'm going to say on yeah. my channel. That's it. The if whole she, is a whole. Yeah. <laughs> if she, no, uh, there's like this stupid, ins there's a really dumb insult me and Taco like to do to people um, where I go, oh, dude, if she's too good for me, she's definitely too good for you. Yeah. You're like you do that, but, but you can say that in so many ways. Like, let's say you're playing uh, basketball with somebody, and it's like, well, that guy's better than me. He's way better than you are. It's like this weird insult. I don't know. You can kind of use it for different things. Ugly um, chicks are cheaper. Ugly chicks are cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah okay, okay. Whatever. Beauty subjective. Okay. So back to the YouTube thing, because I'm um yeah. curious. Oh, here. check it out. So you're so you're you're I've at been oh for a while. <laughs> Wait, I I thought you said you had fifty thousand. Well, I've been on YouTube since 2013, so I know the whole game. I know how to grow the channel and stuff. So if you, oh. if, you need, if you want to ask any questions, I'll answer it. It's just my first okay. channel. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Um, what do you think I could do better with my channel? You need women in the show. Can you get well, girls well, in the show? So I so you want me to actually bring people here or get women on the live stream? I'll tell you what, what to do to blow up. If you can bring girls on the stream and what we're doing right now and to have a hot chick with you, before you know it, you will blow up. And actually, that's what I do on my YouTube channel. On in every video, I try to bring some hot girls with me, you know. So I use it as a thumbnail and people click on it, there are hot girls, and then I start talking my talking head. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. basically, you have to trigger. Uh, like a lot of people chase after YouTube algorithm, but I yeah. chase after like dark psychology of people. So I know we guys like to look at hot, uh, smoking hot women. So that's what I show them. You know what I mean? And that's what triggers guys to watch and YouTube algorithm to push <laughs> content. How do you, do you mind me asking? How do you yeah, just sure. like um, obtain these beautiful women to come on your um, YouTube channel? Are they oh. your like? Are they your genuine friends that you've met out at the bar? Look, or, it's a whole know, game to to get hot women, but I'll tell you right away, I don't do street approaches. So I usually do a sneaky way. For example, when I was in Miami last summer or well, last winter, I was registered on Tinder app and I got like rejected all over the place, right? So I realized on the streets and on on the dating apps there is a lot of competition. So instead of me going into this pool of competition where a thousand guys compete for one girl, what I decided to do, all right, so this hot Instagram girls, they're all about money. So I need to create a situation where girls will be interested in me instead of me in them. So what I did, I create, I set up a website saying that, hey, like I'm a YouTuber, like I film movies, I pay $100. I, no, I was paying, I said, I pay $300 for a movie set, four hour movie set. And I ran ads again. So before you know it, I have like hundred resumes from all those Instagram girls. And what I do, I was like, all right, come over on the interview. So out of 150 will come, I will talk to them, but I'm broke back then I was broke. So I had only $300 for the spot. So what I would do, I would take the hottest girl and to the rest of the girl, 49, I'll just say, hey, I already filled the position. How about we exchange the phone numbers and I'll hit you up once I have something. And now I have 49 phone numbers in the day. And mm. when I talk to them, I see their vibe. Is she friendly? Is she all about the business? So if she's all about the business, I don't talk to her. If there are some girls who really like talking to me and want to be friends with me because I'm a producer, you know what I mean? I get her on the date. That's how I started getting to know those girls. Then she invites me on the birthday party. And in two months in Miami, I think I like slayed like 15 girls and I got connections of like 200 women at least. So <laughs> it's easy. Damn, the white Kevin Samuels over here. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's what they call me on my YouTube channel, actually. <laughs> 
Yeah, but I didn't come to show. promote myself, Jack. I genuinely love your country. No, no, hey, dude, I don't care. P people could come here, and I said this to Taco before. I go, look, I could put whoever on here, even, even, like, yeah, I know what we have. In my opinion, we have 268 people watching. To me, that's a big deal. To me, that's huge. Mm -hmm. I may as well. I already said the Johnny Tut thing. Huge. Okay. Yeah, to me, it's big time. And and Max here has been following me since I couldn't even get 50 likes. You get what I mean? So. Um, you know, to me, it's huge. And, uh, I can't say I'm gonna, um, ever, I'm not gonna say I'm never gonna have people in person or anything like that. I don't know what the future holds, but, uh, yeah, you know, I, uh, to me, my channel is like, I've like really branched out from just talking about the women stuff. Um, I mostly just did that to get people in here and then they find me and go, Oh, I like this guy. He's kind of funny. I'm going to follow him. Uh, and now I just talk about a bunch of stuff, but, um, yeah, I've I've seen a lot of people. I, I I get that. That makes sense. I can, sex, I can sex give you smells. another advice if you don't want to bring women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like for what I'm doing right now, um, something easy. How to blow? No, up. no, 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 no. Can uh, I just say? Can I just cut you like short for a sec? Um, I just think it's sick that like you're just like a genuine homie, and like, that's what they say. We <laughs> the people who really know you or know about you, like know about your comedy and like you could just tell how funny you are like take a hit listen to what i gotta say real quick because yeah, what i'm trying to say is like <laughs> it's sick to see like a genuine like funny ass like there's comedians out there who like aren't actually funny they're just great at storytelling and oh they gotta really they gotta really work for it yeah yeah I, I, Say but show. it's sick to see you just like actually starting your whole career like youtube career as like a like talking about the actual issues that are going on and then later there's so much potential to build off of the real issues going on oh yeah for in sure. the world and like build comedy off of that like, yeah that's that's it's gonna that's be I... it's gonna be it's gonna be huge that's what I like because like uh, for all the people who just found me in the last, you know, six months, because um, that's really all the, this is all blown up in the last six months. So but before that, I mean, I've done skits. I've done vlogs. I've done what do they call that when they film you from afar and people don't know they're being filmed and I got like a little mic on me. What do they call that? I don't know what they call that, but I've even done that. <clears throat> Where I'm like pretending to be somebody I'm not in public, and like they, the people don't know they're being filmed. Oh, the prank so, shit. Yeah, yeah, but I would be like do some weird stuff. I want to like do that so yeah. bad. Yeah, I mean, I, I stand up. I've done so many different things, um, and uh, it, it's funny because the whole time I've always just wanted to kind of talk about something worthwhile and also have fun while I did it. So now it's kind of working out because um, that's what I like to do. I like to like. What am I going to sit here? Like, just talk about, you know, dick and ball jokes all day. Those are fun. I've got those. But, um, <laughs> you know, I like a little substance, you know. It's like talk about some, like. Let's, That's let's, exactly what I'm yeah, saying. Let's learn something here. Like, let's, yeah. uh, let's do something other than, you know, there's enough people out there in the world um, just putting out comedy skits. Like, that's, just, that's taken. I, it's cool. That space is filled up. Just, no, the, like, just the discussion that can build off of like even the comments in your videos. Oh like, yeah, I love I love that yeah. is what creates. You yeah, know, I love including those. Bit. Yeah, including those all you guys who leave all these these like good comments. That's why I put them in the videos because it's like one, no one's really doing that, um, and two, uh, you know, you guys say some good shit in there. You know, you do. Um, so. I like to include them in the vids and then it, it makes it feel like how we're here now. Just letting you guys pop on the live. Yeah. I don't really know anybody doing that. Maybe I'm sleeping. Maybe there's somebody doing that already, but, um, I do know one guy who's doing that, but, uh, he only lets his Patreon members come on. So it's kind of like a pay to play type deal. Um, you know, here it's like, I don't care if you're donating money. Come on. Wow. You know? it doesn't I'm matter sleeping on your Patreon though. What's going on with that for real? Um, so I, I haven't, I I'm haven't such a fucking Jew. I haven't, I haven't, you, I, dude, guys, if anybody who's, I, I want to do it. I just dude, don't, don't, don't. I, I say this all the time. Um, 
if you're <laughs> if you're not if you're balling and you're doing well that's your choice you don't have to donate to you know i have one i'm not donating i'm just asking you um about the, the content like the oh, I content haven't posted. versus youtube versus your patreon i haven't posted is it worth thing. it for me no, how I much, what is it five bucks dude i haven't posted one thing to patreon people oh, okay. are just they're just donating to support me and i appreciate it and i'll eventually post it's more of like um you know i don't anybody who's done you know i don't expect a lot of people to donate but you know i have the option there and people donate and you know it means the world to me so you know i make sure they get first class uh access basically that's really it but uh, i don't expect um a lot of people to donate you know i donate to one person on patreon myself and they haven't even responded to my message it's been five months okay. Okay. You know what I mean? So, so, um, I even have like that thought, like, why am I donating to this guy? He hasn't even, he's got what, 20 Patreon members and he can't respond to me. It's like, I'll give you money oh, every month. Cold out here, dude. Um, so anyways, oh, damn. Yeah. um, so it's rare for people to donate <laughs> to somebody like that. So, uh, but Steve here with the 10 bucks, he goes, really enjoy the dating topics. Trust me. I know what I'm talking about. Fellas, all women are beautiful. It's just if you're a if you're man enough to see it, why chase why chase a hot uh, Miami three hundred four? Look in the mirror. Yeah, yeah. You know you don't need that that rubbish. Um, okay. So real quick, so I'm really interested in this. Uh, uh, back to you, George. So so this isn't your first YouTube channel you've started. You've had other YouTube channels in the past. Yeah, like actually, I made what on one. One of my first channels, I made a million dollars. You know what I did? What? So it was, yeah, like, I'm going to laugh. I am. No, so, I'm, I'm going to laugh. It's just crazy that that so is even a reality. Okay, it was okay, 2013. Okay, so you were in the, be in the beginning. You're really close yeah, yeah. Beginning. So I'm like 23 years old, right? Back then, yeah. content ID wasn't working. So basically what you could do, you could take cartoons, movies, and upload it to your YouTube channel, and you're not gonna get banned. So what oh. we were doing, we would just upload like hundred cartoons a day on the YouTube channel, like Tom and Jerry, uh, movies, and all those like thousands of cartoons would start hitting, like getting one million views a day. And that's oh wow! Thousand dollars a day, basically. So I would create like five, ten channels like that. And each channel is bringing like a thousand dollars a day, so you would milk it as long as you can. Like usually, you would milk it for like six, seven months before you get banned, and then you create another one. That's how I made my first big money on YouTube. <laughs> He's just like, ha, no big deal. But <laughs> that, but that Tom and Jerry money, boy, I swear. That Tom and that, that milk, that big money. Posting that milky substance for that milk, milk. But you can't do that anymore. I think it's they ended it in 2016. I think that's when my I lost my last channel. So. Okay, okay. This so guy you're goes, basically banned. Oh, I've been banned like a thousand times before my last ban. <laughs> All right, but so but now you're putting. Right, out your okay. own, your own do content. you have a channel? I could I could you could put us up on. Yeah, it's right there. But yeah, now I decided. Well, I was like, all right, fuck it. Like this easy money doesn't get me anywhere in the long term. So I was like, let me create my personal brand. So I started talking about women on my YouTube channel. So. Well, that's awesome, man. So you said you're at, uh, you said you're at 50k now, or you're yeah. more than that. Oh, that's really good. Very nice. Yeah, that's really good. Um, yeah, because right now, I mean, we just hit 20k, and I'm stoked. Um, I'm really happy about it. Uh, also, think, guys, all the new people in here, there's a link. I'm going to drop it in the chat right now. If anybody wants to hop on, you're more than welcome to come in and talk your shit. Somebody um, was saying if you could. Oh, Jack. That's dude. Oh, wait. Jack. Yeah. This shirt. Oh, yeah. I used to. So I had that resale business that I've told you guys about a thousand times. He actually came through and bought something years back. On my he's, dirt he's, bike. He's, he still got the shirt. Damn. Yeah. Oh, so been I, I'm okay. assuming it was your dad's. No, no, no. Um, 
No, that was something I bought. Really? To, yeah, to resell. Yeah, it's beefy on me, bro. But it it just does the trick every time I go out with that thing. People like, are like, I, "Oh, you look good." Yeah. No, I I just that was a I, good fucking buy. I don't. I, I just don't, I drove I just all know, the way the fuck out there too. To I just know the hell that you live Boyan or I don't even know where that is. But yeah, when it when it came to selling, like the rap or some shit. Oh yeah. I like uh when it comes to selling clothing, I just kind of know, especially with like button ups and crazy button ups, it's like uh there's a huge demographic. It's not like a certain age demographic with those. It's like a 70 year old can wear them and an 18 year old who's just discovering funky button ups can wear them. So I those used to sell oh, really yeah. well. I still do actually. Look where I've come now, bro. Can oh, you yeah, look guess what guess what skate this is actually a vans. It looks like your mom's fucking couch, dude. It looks or like your, your mom's couch. couch. Unreal. But um, it's actually a Vans. And it wasn't expensive. It was like some random collab. That's nice. It's a good, good shirt. Yeah, but um, all right, let's see what else we got here. Sorry, I didn't mean to. No, you're good. Cut you you're off. No, no, geez, it's fine. Just chilling That's in my cool. closet, which I haven't even organized yet. I just moved into this place a few days ago. He goes, uh, my dude kept one of your old shirts. He actually bought that from uh, from uh, my little resell thing I used to do. I still do it, but I, I I don't actually go out and buy anything anymore. I just have all this stuff that's still for sale, and people still buy shit. So. Dude, is it not so hard to like get rid of certain things that are like – you've literally just, had experiences in like certain clothes like that is, oh dude how do, you, how do you like i'll sell i'll how do you sell draw every, the line because for me it's no, so hard no dude I, every, you see everything I need to behind, get rid of some clothes look everything behind me my whole house if i have to gone everything's sold i don't care like you, you, sometimes everything's you, for sale everything for sale if you yeah dude like I'm not saying it's all about the money, but I'm saying no. It, if you're in a tough spot, if you got a bunch of crap you can sell, sad. you get you just sell it all. Get but just, I, I'm just saying the emotional yeah. part of it. I mean, for me, I mean, you know us South Florida boys, we got the swag, we got the drip, but it's just hard to like to sell it when you've had like so many great experiences, so many great compliments on your drip, like on I'm not, I don't, I don't <laughs> buy and resell like you do. I just have like thrifted pretty much everything. So, but I have a collection that I should probably start fucking. I'm about to move back to Florida. Like I said, next year, yeah, why, why don't food we, truck. Yeah. Why don't we get to that? I need to get rid of shit, bro. This is, I will start. Start getting rid of stuff. One thousandth of what quit I quit being a quit being a bitch about it, man. Just do it. Just get rid of some hit. shit. I just need to take a hit. All right, real quick. So, Max, you want to start a food truck? I do. What is your idea? What kind of food are you gonna do? Do you have a name for it? What what what? You know, how are you gonna do this? Yeah, I have about a hundred names uh, in my iPhone notes right now. I come up up with the most wild names but basically um i'm starting off very simple just keeping it basic and it's just going to be bowls because when i eat at home and i cook for myself i eat everything out of a bowl i don't care if i make a fucking tomahawk i'm gonna chop that shit up throw it over some sushi rice whatever the fuck Um, so everything I eat is out of a bowl. So basically my concept is just going to be dank ass bowls. And you basically get to pick from like three different, um, you get to pick from like three different, um, carbs or like bases or bowl. Like for instance, sushi rice, like well cooked sushi rice, um, you know, roast veg, um, and then maybe like a soba or still trying to figure out the third um and from there you get to customize like your toppings and most of the proteins are going to be just like braises that i absolutely stand by and are my favorite things to eat 
So okay. things like I literally can just throw in the oven overnight and just set and forget. And it's going to be amazing. Like braised brisket, you know, you name it. Um, obviously going to have some ve- uh, vegetarian option, uh, like a smoked jackfruit, um, which for those okay. of you who okay. don't real, know is real, like. Real, real quick, real quick. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. All right. Food and everything aside, I'm saying how do you plan on actually starting it? That's what I'm more uh, concerned on. It's just such right, a you're gen- just getting me it's, hungry. It's, at this I point. know it's a gen. It's just like a like a how much broad do you need to question. Start, how much do you I, need to start a food truck? Like working capital wise. Yeah, hundred grand. Fifty uh, anyway, right here. Yeah, so that's what I'm like in the works of right now. That's why I'm planning so far ahead. I have uh, luckily a family member, my aunt who has always been willing to invest in one of my businesses. Um, But I basically finally have like a full business plan and she's really fucking smart. She would never invest her money in me. And I know a lot of people say, don't do that with a family member, but she is literally has nothing to lose from this. She's always wanted to invest in me. Um, but yeah, if we're talking about food truck, like I'm still very frugal and I plan on actually building it myself and buying just like an empty truck and setting up the, like actually finding used equipment and like setting it up the way I need it to be for my operation. I don't know if you've seen the McDonald's movie or whatever. Uh, oh yeah. The the founder. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good so movie, by the way. Yeah, we're on the they're on the tennis court and stuff. Like, I'm gonna need yep. to do exactly that. Um, but yeah, if we're talking about like working capital, like to do what I want to do just to start, uh, we're looking at like probably like sixty five grand. Sixty five, um, sixty five. For what I want to do for like the truck that I want to build, yeah. Okay, uh, and cool, that man. that's like. That could be way <clears throat> over, but there, it won't go depends, any higher than that. It depends on the, the areas you live, too. Like, I live near Pittsburgh. You can find step vans and stuff like that with low mileage, like fleet vehicle, 25, 40,000 mile step vans would make an excellent food truck because of the, the boxiness and the, the entry yeah. and the ability to cut a door or a, a window, a service window out the side of them. They're just set yeah. up for that. I definitely want to have a TV mounted on the outside, which is like dank ass pictures. And I'm yeah. obviously going to hire like a friend to well, honestly, I want to monetize a YouTube channel to like show my entire journey, like through starting the food truck. Cause I don't really think anybody's done that. I know some guys that do it the right festival. way Here, okay. that they have trailers. They converted uh, box trailers to like fryer trailers or steam table trailers. Like one guy does tacos, one guy does wings. That's more uh, up my alley. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's like one I, I'm thing. Like, I say what food truck, okay. but I sorry to go. You you I say safe. food truck, but I actually am gonna buy like and I sell my fucking dream car that I have right now. Buy a fucking stupid like Toyota Tundra or Thanks, whatever. Stupid. I, I, and I then a trail and then trailer car. my shit because I don't know. I'm like pretty mechanically inclined as far as like automobiles you can, go you can, but i you don't want to have to worry up. about like oh taking out the front seat and then like going in to like work on the engine and you can set your trailer all that shit i'd rather just morning. have a truck and a trailer in you the can back. drop your trailer off at six in the morning and have it like 50 percent set up and then come back in with your coolers and everything through the day you know what i mean if you have an agreement with there's places around here that do that they have agreements with gas stations along the interstate where there's a food truck on, there's a taco truck, there's a it's Italian awesome. hoagie truck on each each gas station. They just, I mean, their their trailers sitting there weeks on end, and they just come, they buy gas from the gas station to fire up the generator. They're not like shore powering off the uh, off the gas station or nothing. They run their generators. It's like they were at a festival, whatever, you know, their own power, gas or electric, whatever it is. All right, well, we lost Max on that one. Anyways, uh, before I get to you, Joe, and ask you some questions, what's up, Mark? I'll get to you in a moment, Big Daddy. Uh, Dominic says, uh, you need about 65 k to start a food truck, and it's very likely you will fail. Yeah, that's the attitude to have about it. 
you know. It's that's, tar. that's the way to tar. do it. Um, I mean, it's the it's the truth. Most most uh, businesses do fail, but um, I don't think it's a bad idea, honestly. Uh, if especially if you have a um, like if I were to start a food truck, which I never will. Um, I mean, I might. Yeah, I don't think I might invest in one, maybe, possibly. But um, if I were to start a food truck, I would definitely have a. Uh, I'll probably still work a job on top of that. Um, just to make sure. I don't know if you could though. You don't like, think so? You just pull up. Uh, Wait. I require so much maintenance and time. No, man. It's like you, running you, a restaurant, but on wheels. You wouldn't have another job. Yeah, I know, but I mean, unless you had a good spot every day to park, yeah, I'd just be pulling up on the weekends to events and. Yeah, like when we lived in Los Angeles, my friends do that. Those food truck people, those food trucks killed it out in Los Angeles. No, yeah, they they definitely even here, man. There's like a taco food truck. By my my brother's house, it's just they murder it. They're slaying it. Uh, anyways, um, it looks like Joe's doing something. But Mark, what's going on, brother? How you doing? Hey, I'm Put doing up. good. I'm doing good. I liked the video yesterday, but I like all your videos, of course. All right, yeah. So uh, anybody who caught yesterday's video, this is uh, Mark. He was the guy on uh, Instagram who had the heavy childhood story but anyways back to joe here joe so what's up with you brother how old are you where are you hailing from i'm in uh west virginia north central west virginia so right in the pit in the middle of it and i'm going on 48 years old here in january all right awesome man so uh what have you been doing uh to acquire money if you don't mind me asking as far as how i've made my fortunes uh yeah uh, I've worked for the power company for 24 years and uh, on the side, as far as side gigs that I've had over the years, I know you guys love talking about that and oh, I yeah. do too. I, I do too. Uh, I got into uh, motorcycles when I was in college and um, I got into really small, like around here, the Honda Trail 90 was a very popular motorcycle, a little single cylinder. Uh, low geared trail bike and only went about 55 miles an hour, but they were really popular. A lot of the old guys still liked them. And I, I got into rebuilding those and Honda trail seventies. I had a couple trick ass little like Honda Dax bikes that I'd ride around campus and stuff, man. The, the Japanese girls loved them, dude. They, oh, they knew. I, oh, no, no, I, I, I like Asian. I like Asian ladies. I'll, I'll get that. You know, just say that. Like and first they let, Oh no, I had a couple, but you know, the, 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 your first is the best. But, yeah, my first Asian girl was a motorcycle. After that, you know, I, I grew to like the ones on two legs instead of two wheels. Okay. But but still, um, I had all these Trail 90s. I would go to buy one because I knew how to work on them. They were simple motors. It's almost like working on a lawnmower. Very simple, very simple transmissions. They were durable. If they were like wrecked yeah. neglected you could usually bring them back to life very easily and i'd buy these things two hundred dollars in the in the newspaper for sale and i go to look at one and there'd be like two others in the corner of the barn like with crap all stacked on i was like are those trail 90s too well yeah we we're gonna drag those out and sell those next week i was like what if i just take those for an additional 200 just drag them out dirty i'll take them dirty and i had i amassed like a dozen of these bikes and it was nice because there were common parts. I would only take certain model years because the parts were swappable. And I was cranking out complete bikes for a thousand bucks, no title, running back in the day, like in, in 19, eh, about 1999, 2000. I was buying these things for 200 bucks and then putting them together. And I'd have a couple scrap ones here or there, but I made at least five, six thousand dollars out of you know, 10 bikes that jump. So uh, it, that, that's money on top, money on top, not what I paid for them. Yeah. Wait, real, real it quick. Hold on. Hold, hold on. I'm going to pause you real quick. Um, hey, George, I'm going to get you out of here. We got a bunch of people in the queue. Um, but why don't you go ahead and DM me on Instagram and let's schedule something to me and you could do, uh, uh, do some work. Right on. All right. Thank you. Good yeah, just DM me. Yeah, just DM me on Instagram and we'll 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 cook something up. I'd love to do something with you. All right, all right, cool. Thanks, man. Hi, right, brother. Um, sorry. Okay, so, um, <laughs> hey, hey, Mark, real quick. Um, 
You mind if I kick uh, kick you out of here and bring you back on? Just get some new blood on here. I got a bunch no, of people. Oh, that's here. that's totally cool, man. I was just wanting to congratulate you real quick. Oh, uh, thanks, brother. The show. Awesome hitting that 20,000 subscribers, man. I'm Mark, you're the, my, you're the I'm man, dude. Yeah, you're great, the man. Good energy. I'm gonna get, and okay. we'll get you back on. We'll get you back on here in a, in a little bit. All right, that's cool. I'll be watching. Hey, man, you're the man. All right, we got some a bunch of new people coming in here. Uh, Joe, I'm going to get right back to you in a second. Um, all right, who do we got here? Let's see. We got... All right, Caleb, Nick, my man. Uh, oh, all right, we'll go to Caleb first. Caleb, where are you hailing from, brother? Cleveland, Ohio. Okay, all right. Yeah, they used to yeah. call me. Uh, they used to call me Cincinnati Slim back in the day. Look, oh, he, he's cutting out. Uh oh, we got a malfunction here. Here's Caleb. Uh oh, Caleb's going down. All right, Caleb, we're gonna put you on hold for a second. Caleb, you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right. So, uh, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you, and uh, what are you doing for uh, money these days? I'm uh, 42. I'm a truck driver. Oh, we got another truck. A lot of truck drivers. Truck driver. A lot of yeah, truck yeah. drivers on this channel. Well, that's awesome, man. How long have you been in the trucking biz? I've, I've had my. I've got my license in May. And I've been working for the same company for like three years now. No, oh, I nice. was in their warehouse. Okay, yeah. cool. Oh, That's so awesome, dude. Up. Okay. So, uh, what, what uh, brought you? Uh, <laughs> Thank what you. Brought you. What brought you to watching the channel? If you don't mind me asking. I uh, just super entertaining. I told you I I've been messaging you on your uh, like every video and stuff. You're a pretty entertaining, dude. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, man. That's awesome. I'm going to get right back to you, Caleb, in a second. Nick, brother, what's up, man? Uh, how old are you? Hey. Where are you hailing from? Hey, guys. Uh, my name is Nick. Oh, I'm from Arizona, Tucson, Arizona. So uh, I just uh, really like your content. I'm uh, in the HVAC field. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think I've seen your content before, but then I clicked on it just recently. And, I don't know, I agree with a lot of what you say. A uh, man with no bills is a rich man. So, I mean, yeah, I right. think that's important. Okay. I think that's important, you know. Uh, the red pill stuff may have been what got it uh, on on the feed, but I don't know. I mean, I like your view on on everything a little more than some of the other content I see. So I think that's uh, relatable to a lot of people, you know. Just uh, being more of a relationship guy. I am single, but I've been married a couple times. So he's been I married think, a couple uh, times. A couple. couple times. Hey, real quick. Times. Hey. Kroll, can you hear me? What's up, baby? Hey, you got uh, something playing in the background. Is that you? Hold on, it's my son. Hold on. Okay. All right. Do you actually still hear it? Hold on. I'm going to have to put him on. Uh, I'm going to put him on mute real quick. I think that's good. Enough. Just trying to fix that background noise there. All right, that sounds a lot better. Can say, say something? See if I can hear you. How's that? All right, perfect. All right, I'm gonna get right back to you, brother. All right, so Nick, how long you been in the yeah. uh, How long you been in the HVAC field? Oh, well, it's been about six years. I started off doing install work and then started doing service, and after that for a couple of years, and you know, it's been install, service, maintenance, and did a little HVACR. So the refrigeration was. It's really tough. I don't know. I mean, I've been in it six years, and I really don't know how these guys do it. But, I mean, I, I'm i not working for anybody right now trying to do things on my own. So, I mean, it's definitely a good trade to get into. But, you know, I mean, you probably could have done it if you if you tried I it. Tried. But, you know, yeah. if your friends talked you out of it, I don't blame them. You know, no, it's yeah, definitely yeah. a gig. I did. He thought I was. He thought I was psycho. He was like, "Are you stupid? Like, you're not gonna do this." He was like, or... "What are you thinking?" He's like, "You're a yeah. an idea man." How do I know? I went to welding yeah. school. I went to welding school for a year. Yeah. Got certified in everything, and I don't even do that. based. Yeah, yeah, he, it's all good. He the did. Skills are good to know. Yeah, um, I did that for a few years. No, I, I just so I don't know. I mean, I think freelancing is really good. I think what you're doing is good. Uh, I, I do own my place, and I just. 
I'm at the point where if I want to do things on my own, I, I might, you know, be better off just selling everything. You know, I do have a few cars, a couple motorcycles, and, you know, the more money you could accumulate if you put it away and earn interest on it, seems like you could make money just parking it in the bank. But what's the right answer? You know, I mean, if your house is paid for, it's good to keep it, but there are always decisions that you can make to maybe even get further. So I relate to your content. I just, I think it's important to think about your, your future. So, yeah, I mean, it's also important to have fun, but at the same time, it's, uh, like starting your own thing is never, um, it's never, it's, it's just not easy. It's just not. No, it's, it's not. It's so hard. Like I've made this joke before. I, I don't even think it's really a joke, but it's like, you know, who wants to go to work all day, get off work and then work some more. And you know, not many people yeah. want to do that. Um, no. unfortunately, but to get ahead, uh, that's what it takes, man. I've had like so many people ask me like, um, because I'm such like a, I'm not, I'm not like some dude with this degree who got some crazy job and made all this money. I've always been like a regular guy who's always right. happened uh, to have some money, but it's like, the answer mm -hmm. is, is you're going to have to just work every single day yeah. for quite a long time. And then right. one, one day you wake up and you go, Oh, I have 50 grand in the bank. I can work five days a week now find a side hustle like, you like to do make extra money on the side yeah, you know as yeah you can. like and you don't need to have mm. like I, I don't have a college degree like if i don't have a college degree and i'm able to get ahead um like real quick taco what happens when you work seven days a week for about a year what happens your bank account just goes up tremendously i mean yeah yeah, yeah it goes up and we, and we yeah. didn't and the most important part is not having time to spend the money. Yeah. So you just put your head down, work for six months a year. <laughs> it's, 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 so it's, it's, it sounds so simple, right? It sounds so easy. Like mm. um, our friend who I'm going to bring him up again because it's been racking my brain the past three, three days. So I let him move in with me last year. He lived with me for nine months for very little money a month. I'm talking criminally cheap, especially in South Florida. Um, 700 a month is a joke where we live. Um, and he made more money than I did. You know, he was making more money than me at the time. Right. And I'm still was able to still save a little bit. But the whole time he's with me, he saved nothing. And I'm sitting here going... Yeah. How? And he, but but here's what he wasn't doing. He wasn't he wasn't really at it. He was only working four days a week. So now mm -hmm. you got three full days off, and and you've lowered your bills dr drastically. But like all you had to all he had to do was just work every fucking day for that nine months, and he would have been hood rich Ricky. Simple as that. Right. That that simple. But he's not gonna fucking I mean, yeah, no, I know. People are stubborn, stuck in their ways. But, uh, you know, I agree. You have to work. And part of me feels like you have to enjoy what you're doing, too. But as long as you're hustling, you can still make it work. But, I mean, you have to be frugal either way. And like with the car loan videos, I know a lot of people aren't frugal. So it's just hard for everybody to get oh, ahead and stay ahead of the game. So dude, I agree my, with a lot of that, too, as well. Yeah, like my brother right now, he's looking at trucks. And, um, and he deserves a nice car, man. He makes six figures. Um, he just spent a lot of money on a wedding. So I know I'm frozen right now on the screen, but I'll pop back up. Um, so he's been looking at trucks and, uh, he's going to have to have a payment, um, for the truck he wants, but we were hanging out the other night and dude, why does this keep freezing? This is pissing me off. Hold on one second. Sorry guys. I need to get a webcam. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. So he's been looking at trucks, right? And so I took the liberty of, um, of just, uh, going and looking up some trucks for him. 
And because he doesn't want a used car, which makes no sense. Because I'm like, dude, you bought a used house. You know what I mean? Like, what's the big deal if somebody's driven a vehicle before? Like, what's the problem with that? Um, right. No matter what car you buy, somebody's driven it. The guys at the dealership, the person who made the damn car. You know, it's been someone's driven it. So someone yeah. at the dealership probably had sex in the back seat of that car. I hate to break it to you. Hmm. I know I would yeah, be. After the first year. After the first couple you know of years, think? probably, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so so I, I took the liberty of looking up some used 2017s, um, same truck he wants, but 2017. What do you know? Mm. 20 grand, 17 grand. Yeah. Um, right. And he and he was like, like a like I'm a genius or something. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, it's not that hard. I'm like, you don't need a sixty five thousand dollar truck, bro. You don't need it. Like this so twenty seventeen grand. Yeah. yeah, this twenty seventeen Chevy looks the same as this twenty twenty three Chevy. Like I hate to break it to you, but they look the fucking same. Nobody cares. I have never once anybody in here. Have you ever once saw a, a F one fifty driving down the road and went, "Damn!" No, <laughs> never. I've never no, said that. No. One, never once in my life. I never, never said that. I've never been like, wow, that guy's driving a $65,000 Dodge Ram. Holy shit. Yeah, look at that thing. Never in wow. my life. Uh, like, <laughs> if you were, I, I, just, no, it doesn't, it doesn't, ha I'm sure it happens, but most, like, Taco's the best. He doesn't care about cars. No. Like, mm -hmm. every, everyone could be like, right. um, everyone could be going, man, do you see that, you see that Mustang out there? And Taco's like, what, where, where, which one is it? Yeah. He's like points at a Kia. He's like, well, he's like, that Kia looks the same as, as that one. And it's like, no, that's a Mercedes. Yeah. That's a Kia. And Taco's like, bro, they look the same. What are you talking like, about? I know. Yeah. It's crazy to think about one could cost $50,000 more than the other. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of funny. But anyways, let's get back to Kroll over here. Sorry for everybody waiting in the queue. I'm going to get to you here. Um, What's up, Nick, buddy? Um, nothing much, brother. How you doing, man? Doing Where you well. hailing from? Uh, North Carolina, Lexington, North, North Carolina, North Carolina. All right. All right. Yeah, How like, old are you? I'm 33. Okay. Yeah. Right there. We're the same. What are you? 89, uh, 90, 90. 90? Okay. 90. Yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, I just turned 34. So that's well, awesome. Birthday, man. So, thanks, man. So, so, uh, what are you, uh, doing for, for the dollar bills? Nowadays? I actually run operations for a concrete company. Oh man. So you wait, so are you out like laying the concrete or are you running behind the scenes? No, so I manage the fleet that brings the concrete to the guys. Oh, okay. I gotcha. Yeah. So um how long you been in the, that industry? About eight years. Oh shit. So uh I'm assuming the concrete money's pretty good. Six plus. So Oh wow, that's really good. Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. So, um, so what have you been with the same company or you had to like kind yeah. of work your way up and I worked oh, my awesome. way up, but pretty much the same. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome, man. That's really cool. Actually, yeah, uh, you might like, is I just sold, we just sold our house that had a 2.8% interest rate, which a lot of people are like, oh, we're not going to, you know, no one's going to sell, but with the economy, the way it's going, we're just like, nah, we don't want to be in that. So. Wait, so you said you sold it or you decided yeah. not to sell? Oh, so we you sold did sell it. it. Yeah. Okay. Did you find a, another good deal or like, what are you just renting or did you buy something? Probably going to invest it. Oh, okay. And then just rent? Yeah. Uh, that's At not, least until we get some more money accumulating because it's just going to snowball as we invested. So did you have like a shit ton of equity? Yeah. Oh yeah, he goes yeah. He's like, I got, <laughs> he's like I got concrete money, dude. Like, <laughs> like what do you think about that concrete got, money? It's, it's solid. Um, well, that's awesome, man. That's really cool. Where'd you say you're located again? North Carolina. North Carolina. Okay, so have you noticed a huge influx of people moving there? Or absurd? Um, absurd. Yeah, big time. I, I, yeah. I th I've seen a lot of like we have a friend from New York who moved there. Is it true a lot of New Yorkers move into North Carolina? It seems that way to New me. New York, Boston, uh, even Florida, Texas. Oh yeah, California. definitely Florida. I mean, you wouldn't people. believe. I I I do believe it at this point because I got another uh, another friend, my boy Chase. 
he he moved to Idaho before um before everybody else did. And wow. uh he said he was like, Man, I beat everyone here, but he's like, Boy, it's Hey Leonard, man, you fucking puffing that damn thing. Sound like a tea kettle. Sound like a damn cheese. I'm like a train. damn. Yes, uh, <laughs> the tea's done already, oh, man. Yeah, tea Shit. <laughs> God, good lord. Um. <clears throat> anyways, real quick, let me get to Ryan here. Ryan, can you hear me? Hey. Yeah, I can hear you. What's up? Can you hear me? The, the man with no face here. What's going on, brother? How old are yeah. you? And uh, where are you hailing from? I'm. I'm good. Did you say how old am I, or how how am I? Uh, we we could do both. both. How old are well, you and how are you? I'm fan, I'm fantastic, man. I'm about your age. I'm 33. Okay. Um, I'm right outside of Austin, Texas. I uh, just want to pop up on here and say, you know, congratu congratulations on 20K subscribers. Oh, thank That's you, awesome. man. Hell thank yeah. you. I'm stoked, uh, yeah. Yeah, man. Love the show. You know, love the vibe you kind of, you know, create with the, the neon. You got the, the red leather podcast. You got this yep. sort of, you know, the vibe. It's like the laid back homie with the, the 90s what? kid kind of sensibility. So I love yeah, that. We, yeah, we try and keep it fun, man. Keep it loose. Keep it funky for you. Hell yeah. And you mentioned Kill Tony, and I was like, damn, I know Kill Tony. That's awesome. And you do comedy. So, you know, there's there's a ton of local comedians coming up here and doing podcasts and, you know, just other broadcasters, too. And it's crazy. And Austin, man, the amount of resources available for that, it's just it's just blown up. I mean, they're trying to turn it into kind of almost like a little Hollywood out here. You know, media companies so are coming... Go ahead. Wait, so you're you're so you're in Austin? I used to be in Austin for about three years. I worked here, and then I my parents are in, in Houston, and I kind of went. They they were have, having some health issues, and so I've been back and forth, kind of in between here and Bastrop. Okay. Um, my brother moved to Bastrop, so I'm kind of like living with him. But anyway, long so story you, short, I'm right outside of Austin, kind of where the new Tesla Gigafactory is. Okay, that's all I was trying. I was trying to get that if you were in Texas yeah. or in that area. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Austin, Austin's like, for what I'm trying to do, um, because honestly, like, the typical stand-up route of like just grinding it out and going mm -hmm. and doing these open mics, I've done it, and it's like, I don't want to say it's pointless because it's not, because I like, I really enjoy stand-up. I really do. I'm gonna like that's gonna be part of my career, mm. but. But I am gonna go out to Austin and kind of just go and because you're right, it's like um, there's so many spots available, and it's not just the mothership. It's not just yeah. Like there's like sunset. five there's places. Yeah, five places there's on more. one strip. Oh yeah, but it's also just the all because all the local comedians have moved in, and they're all trying to not just get spots, but also make new spots because you know they might want to be producers, they might want to build their own show or build their own podcast, and then not just that, but even prior to all the comedians coming here podcasters were coming here and broadcasters were coming here because there's all these media resources available from the city. They literally yeah. invest guys like Richard Linklater come in and will run Austin public access. I'm a producer through Austin public access. So they have, oh, really? they have public access uh, resources available. We're talking studio space. We're talking like where you can get three Ursa black magic, the top of the line, cameras available multiple studio spaces for free as part of the city that pays for this so they wait, are wait, 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 trying wait, wait. to make it into a media hub wait wait slow down hold on okay yeah for so free. you said you're you said you're a producer on public access okay austin, so austin public access correct okay so real quick like explain it to me as if i'm a kindergartner here sure is, what is this for tv it radio can go, it can like, what, all, is this? all of the above and the internet so when you're a producer with Austin Public Access, which is a, a program, it's it's almost free. You got to pay for the classes to get certified. But when yeah. you are a producer through them, you own the content, and that content can get distributed on the internet as much as you want. So and, and they give you a free license for Streamyard, for instance. So you can put oh. out the same show you're doing, the Red Leather Podcast, as as an Austin Public Access producer. The only kind of catch or whatever, it's a free program. It's done through the city. The only real catch is that you have to allow them to broadcast it on the local public access television as well, which is like, oh, God, twist my arm. You're, you're going to give me more exposure on actual television? Sure. Wait, so I this mean, is so this is, a real, this is a real thing that's happening. Yeah. I've never even heard of this ever. 
Yeah, so and I think a lot of a lot of these broadcasters and local comedians and podcasts don't even know about this. But even beyond that, there's just a groundswell of all of these dudes that have come out here, young women too. But if they can't get on Kill Tony, a lot of times they're still running their podcast. They'll they'll still try and get spots at some of these other because Kill Tony, you got to you got to understand you if you come out here just for a week, two weeks, three weeks, you're gonna put your name in that hat, and good chance you're not gonna even go up. You're not gonna get picked. People yeah, go yeah. out for seventy Real quick, and eighty I'm, times and still I'm never make it up. Yeah, I'm gonna explain this to everybody about the Kill Tony thing. Uh, thanks for the six sixty five six thousand dollars. Just kidding. Uh, he goes, congrats on the 20K. Keep up the momentum. I appreciate that, man. Thank you for the the dollar-dollar bills. I really appreciate that. So anyways, whoever is watching this and doesn't know what Kill Tony is, it's basically a live show where they allow a bunch of – they'll have like a couple of known comedians come on, you know, Joe Rogan yes. or Theo Vaughn or somebody big. Um, and then they'll, they'll allow all these no-name comedians – to basically put their name in a hat, right? It's like an open mic night. It's like an open mic, but a million people watch every episode. Yeah, it's the largest so, comedy live comedy podcast in the world. It's, it's huge. So basically, you've got every uh, person who wants to make jokes on a stage in front of strangers coming up there trying to do their thing. And um, so basically... Uh, I've heard of people putting their names in that this hat like 15 different times. 50 times. Only, 70 yeah, times. 50. 50 times, never make it up. Yeah. Um. So that's why I was saying like I'm going to go out there once I'm totally full time yeah. with, this shena- with this here. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to start going out there like once a month. Exactly. And, but and but just even, know, it's not just Kill know. Tony. It's not, I mean, I know everybody's trying to get on Kill Tony and they'll go out yeah, yeah, 80, yeah. 80 times. But even before, like one of the biggest guys that has gotten, has just blown up, Kim Patterson. Mm-hmm. He, he made it on like the second or third time. But there's been other people that hadn't made it on for like 15, 20 times that finally get on and then blow up. But before that, they were like a local legend. You know, like all the other comedians knew them, thought they were funny, and almost put them on. Like, people will put in the good word for you. If you're good, if you are good at comedy, and you know how to put a minute together, or 10 minutes together, or 15 minutes together, you can make it in Austin, is all I'm saying. And there's yeah. other local comedians that will put you on and help. If they, if you've got a podcast, if you're a broadcaster, if you're in the scene, and you're going out to these meetups, and you're beating these people anyway... They'll put in a good word for you and they'll put you on anyway and they'll have you on their podcast and you can collab and there's this sort of, you know, the rising tide lifts all boat and there's other resources available for that. So just saying, you don't have to wait for the golden ticket to come along. There's other stuff here in the area for that. So, yeah, I mean, that was kind of my game plan, too, was even if I don't get on, I'm still going to go do stand up, experience it and I'll film stuff. I'll still be doing what I'm doing. But at least and you'll have other people to do it with, yeah. to collab yeah. with that can can either, you know, at you know, other resources. You've got the Austin public access, but because everybody's in the mix and is trying to kind of do it themselves, you've got other talent you can reach out to and collab with or, you know, that can put you on or have it have as a guest on their podcast or you on or them on you. Yeah. And you know what's really what's really funny though about like the whole stand up comedy scene um, that I've noticed. It's like, um, cause I, cause I'm so l- loose with people. Like I want other people to win. So I never like go to a comedy club and like, I'm not sitting there judging all these other comedians. Um, it's almost like there's the comedy police. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's really, yep. it's yep. really odd, man, because I'm just kind of like, I'm, I'm doing things my own way. So. You know, when I did stand up recently, a couple of these other comics, if you would call them that, they were like asking me where I was talking about YouTube and stuff. And then they were super confused because I'm not doing stand up. So they're wondering, like to them, it's like that's the only way to do it. And I'm, I'm just like, I'm like, look, I've kind of accepted that I'm going to build my own route. And um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm still going to go try the Austin scene out. But um, for sure, man, for sure. And when you, you know, do, you know, hit, hit me up or, you know, maybe I can get you in touch with other, other people. And I know some other Red Pill content creators in the area. Just uh, everybody, everybody that's a broadcaster, podcaster or comedian has come out of the woodworks and just found it has 
all the resources, <laughs> everything is available to you. Um, Absolutely, was, man. One other thing I wanted to kind of touch on, though, is kind of a different subject. You know, I know you're always, you know, you guys are talking about, you know, ways to make money and investing and all this other stuff and, you know, rising cost of living and yep. all this stuff. Um, one thing my folks are doing in the area, they just sold their home, you know, and banked a bunch of equity. And uh, they're buying property to put RVs, you know, RV parks have blown up in the area because you know, again, rising cost of living, everybody's living in an RV. Yep. Uh, you can rent these slips for 400 a month and they're building a place, they're starting phase one with 16 slips and that's like 6,400 a month at 400. So, and then they're gonna build out to 30 and maybe 45. So, you know, it's, there's, there's a, if you can bank a little bit from your, from your home, you can, you know, invest and do some real estate investing in a real cost effective and pretty cheap way and get a pretty damn good cash flow. So that, yeah, and that's, especially here I, in the Texas area. That's uh, something this guy, George is kind of near me, his older guy. He does that. He's got a huge, uh, probably about an acre or two. And he just rents out every plot. He, he every single part of his land is a bunch of people parking RVs, boats, even living there. Um, yep. Yeah, because I had bought a car from him. That's how I met this guy, older older dude. And he was like, you know what? I don't even care. He's like, why not? He's like, I'm tired of having to worry about money. He's like, I'm just renting out all of this land that I'm not using. And I was yeah. like, that's genius. He's like, yeah, I don't even – he's like, I don't work. He's like, I don't have a pension. I don't have anything. This is my pension. He's like, these people are my retirement. And I was like, yeah, it's kind of genius, actually. And then you always got people there, too. You know, it's like there's yeah. always someone to talk to. Um, he's – definitely never lonely he's got you know 10 people living in his yard um but anyways hold up let's get over here let's get over to tim tim uh leonard i'm gonna get to you in a minute uh tim can you hear me brother yeah i can all right man how old are you where are you hailing from brother uh 28 and i'm from uh las vegas all right las vegas bandit uh, 28 yeah, uh las vegas second las vegas person on the show tonight so uh, what's going on in Vegas, man? You got to impl- how's um, how's living in Vegas? Uh, give it for us people who have never even been to Vegas. What's uh, what's it like there? Uh, I mean, for me, it's pretty boring. I don't drink. I don't do like party stuff. So there's like really like it's a lot of like, you know, light or nightlife stuff. So I don't really partake in that. Basically, I just work and, you know, just come home and just be <laughs> at the but house taking help- care of my dogs. How close do you live to the uh, strip? Uh, about twenty five minutes. I'm like okay, so more on the like right west side of Vegas, so like kind of like where Red Rock is. Okay, cool. That's the um, what is it the the venue where they throw the shows and all that? The Red Rock. Oh uh, yeah, I live like basically okay. ten minutes away from like the actual Red Rock Casino. <clears throat> oh, okay, nice. That's awesome. So, um, so Tim, what are you doing for uh for dollar bills nowadays? So right now I'm actually unemployed. Uh, I'm, That's awesome. I have a job interview. I'm actually a welder by trade, so I have a, another gig coming up. So and that's actually that's funny that you um point to him because I was gonna ask Taco like why don't you uh, weld anymore? Because like I'm in the point in my career where I'm like, do I even want to like still do this? Because like in a sense I'm not a union welder, so I, for me yeah. I build like theatrical props. So like. I'm dealing with like, you know, the entertainment side of things, which is cool and all. I build a lot of cool shit, done a lot of cool things, but it's at the same time, like, I just don't get, like, I mean, like, it's good money, but like, I feel like you could get paid a lot more for what I do. Yeah. So like, it's just like, I don't get the necessary respect. I'm going to keep doing it because, you know, it puts food on the table and whatnot, but yeah, it's Absolutely. just. <laughs> um, so what are you a, uh, what are you certified in? Meg, Tig, Stick? So I actually jack all trades. So like I have certifications in flux core, MIG, okay. um, stick, but like mainly what I specialize in is aluminum welding. Like a lot of the props that we do. I mean, yeah, I gonna, granted yeah. there's like some steel stuff, but like it's a lot of, like of, of aluminum and I don't have a certified or, cer- or certificate for aluminum, but like all, I'm basically all self-taught at that point. All right. Yeah. Um, to answer your question earlier, though, uh, I just I didn't stick with it because I had um, I I had another dream I was chasing 
And when I got my first welding job building private residential elevators, I realized that it's just day in and day, like day and night work. I mean, it's, it's hard work. I mean, it just really wears your body out. Uh, it's a, it's a really big commitment, I guess, to be a welder. You have to really want to do it. It's more than just a job, I think. Right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I mean, I like welding in particular, but it's just like, at least like out here in Vegas, it's just like I've been job hunt or like job hopping for the most part. And it's like, I just want that job that's actually gonna like, you know, give me the respect and like, I don't have to argue about freaking raises. And then, you know, I'm like, I like you said, it's long hours. And it's like, you know, it's taxing after a while. So it's just like, you know, just trying to like, you know, elevate to like, you know, the next part in your career. It just feels like I'm always like stuck. I th I think what it is with um with with any anybody in the trades, it's like it, it it's true. It's what what is it, you have to ask yourself that question. Am I really gonna? And you're 28, right? Yeah. Okay, so you're 28. If you're asking yourself this question now, <laughs> you know you really gotta you really gotta think about that because if you're gonna pivot. Um, I don't want to say you can't pivot at any point in life because you certainly can, but um, I think it's one of those things where it's like, <clears throat> if you're going to pivot, the sooner the better, like for sure. Because yeah, yeah, that's, no, I that's totally one agree. thing. That's one thing, man. Um, the sooner you start working towards something you really want to do, like for instance, let me like don't even think about it. Just answer the question first. First instinct. Anything you could do with your life for money, what would it be? Your dream job. Uh, Just shout it out. Anything you'd like want to do. I, it's like something with like sales, honestly, like sales and like traveling. Like if I can combine those two together. So traveling salesman. And like some degree. Yeah. Or if, <laughs> if not, it, it would be something like in like the tech industry for sure. Okay. Gotcha. Well, that sounds fun. Now you'd have to ask yourself how the hell would I, but like, let's say this, you know, a lot about welding. Is there any way you could become a salesman for a welding company? Is that a thing? Uh, I mean, yeah, you kind of can, but it's not like necessarily like involved with like welding. Yeah. It's okay. It's kind of like you're selling, um, like the materials to weld or like, you know, like, yeah, um, or so on I got and so you. forth. Okay. Well, you know what? I, I th you sound like a good you sound like you got a good head on your shoulders. I think you're going to be just fine. Definitely uh, keep that money coming in. Oh yeah, um, Leonard. I know you're being super patient, but we're going to get deep with you. So uh, hold on, let me get to this gentleman here, David. What's up, brother? Can you hear me? What's up? What's up? Can you hear me? Oh yeah, we hear you loud and clear. Hey, man. my uh, bad, Chuck. Nasty camera should be yeah, on. Uh, no, yeah. Ch uh, this this is something me and Taco have actually discussed several times. Chuck says camera should be uh, mandatory to come on the live stream. Uh, yeah, yeah, hit that like, hit that subscribe, yeah. leave we're, a comment. We're we're not. Uh, <laughs> we've we've made the decision, but we're not acting on it yet. Once once the queue is like totally flooded all the time with people, then we'll kind of make it a uh, you know a rule where you got to have the camera on. But right now it's fine. I it's if there's not many people in there, it, I get it though. It's better for the people watching. I get it. I I totally understand. Anyways, David, how old are you, brother? Where are you hailing from? Uh, originally from Washington, but right now I'm in Hawaii. 28. Oh, damn. Oh, 28. Maui chilling. Oh, Maui. No, it's a bad place. No, Sorry. yeah, I'm on uh, Oahu. Okay. So uh, that's awesome, man. Um, so what are you uh, doing doing for the quiche nowadays? For the, for the big, for the dollars? Uh, to keep it simple, I'm like aviation. Oh. Aviation okay. maintenance. Okay. So you're not, working a, pilot, on not a pilot. But yeah, but you're well, you're a mechanic for airplanes. Yeah. Tech. Mm -hmm. okay. So you work on the computers and stuff like that. Yeah, just on the equipment, on upgrades, data, like just general. It's kind of like I would basically say, it's kind of like being a car mechanic, but on airplanes. You know, like sometimes okay. you got to do something kind of techy. Sometimes you have to just replace a part. You know. So is that a uh, big, pretty big money in that? Um. I think it's good. Like you can live a, a good life and it kind of just depends contract where you go. And, um, I'm not trying to take up too much room, but I went like I was prior military. Okay. 
So like a lot of guys, they um. <laughs> <laughs> but um, a lot of guys, um, the firm one, they, boy. Uh, Yo, they work sorry. on aviation, you know, they work oh, on the aviation sick. side and then they get out and they go work, you know, for all these, think about all the airports, all the airplanes, somebody got to work yeah. on them, you know, and you don't have to go that route. You can go AMP technical school. And it's a, uh, it's, it's, um, it's a job that people don't talk about a lot, but it's like you say, the trades, you know, it's kind of like being a car mechanic. Yeah. That's, that's like, um, that's like, uh, your tradesman's tradesman would know about that. Exactly. Like your and everyday like, person isn't thinking like, oh, somebody's got to work on that uh, Delta airplane that I'm about to go on. No exactly. one's ever. And people really specify. Thinking. And once you're in, um, obviously degrees help you get promoted and become like a manager and stuff. But mm -hmm. once you're in, it's easier. I don't want to say easy, but you can go left and right laterally because it's all kind of relative. So like you can work on one airplane. And then if you want to go work on a different airplane, you have to just go to that technical school for that airplane, which might not be that long. I mean, a couple months, but, or a year or something, but it might not be like a whole, it's not like a whole degree, you know? Yeah. If yeah. That makes sense. No, that makes all sense in the world. This dude, Moon Trader <coughs> goes, uh, Jack really trying to bring out the best in us. Yeah. I mean, that's, um, that I, I always try and do that with all my friends all the time. Like, yeah. and I'm I mean, the one that even, even oh, strangers. Sorry. No, no, you're good. Um, yeah. I mean, I think it's important to, you know, because there's a lot of people out there very, uh, uh, I don't know if I say this all the time, but, um, you know, the last gentleman I just had on here, I kind of said, you know, what would your dream job be? I don't know. I don't know if he's still on here. Is that Tim that I asked him that? I don't know who I asked that. But um, a lot of people yeah, are like, me. yeah, yeah. So the reason why I even asked that question was because sometimes it's easier to say uh, stuff that you actually want to say to a total stranger than to like your family, your friends. And, um, you know, I've always been like that kind of guy where I'll, I think it's necessary because I've had these people in my life where, um, you know, you could tell somebody what you want to do and it could be a minute dream. Just how that dude Max was on earlier. He said he wanted to start a food truck. And there was somebody who left a comment saying he'll most likely fail. That's a lot of people's attitude. Um, so it's hard to even say your dreams out loud to people because a lot of people just just immediately look at the the negative. I mean, how long have I been trying to make money make, talking for a living? How, I mean, uh, over uh, five a, dec years. a decade, yeah. a, a decade trying to create an income. And I can't tell you how many times I've said it to people where they go like, what do you do or what are your aspirations? I tell them uh, I'm going to be a comedian and I'll I'm going to do um, this. First, and, like put bread on the table, you know, and yeah, then of course. do your side hobby on the side, you know, like obviously. Yeah. That's how it, that's how every, yeah, that's exactly yeah. how you got to do it. But what I'm saying is, is, uh, I've had that so many times in my life where majority of people, it's a, an immediate, sh they immediately shoot it down. They don't even have to say it. They don't even have to verbally say that's not going to work. You could just, they, it's, Sometimes they don't even need to say it. They just give you the look. Or they're just like, oh, yeah, well, good luck with that. Um, or they'll say something slick. And uh, so that's kind of why I, I sometimes say some uh, deep stuff. Because I know other people need to hear it sometimes from a stranger. It's important. It's important that you uh, you go for something that you want to do. Uh, it's important for someone to, to tell. Because if I didn't have people tell me my uh, – because I've had a lot of people also tell me the opposite of, of negative stuff. Where they're like, they're like, dude, this is what you need to be doing. Do it. Like, just keep going. And uh, I owe it to those people. Like, I owe it to, uh, you know, this guy right here. Every time I've give, given up, I've had him and other people in my life push me right back, back into it. And uh, if I didn't have these people, if I didn't have him and these other people and the stranger at Walgreens and some random guy who watched me four years ago, you know, give me shit for giving up, you know, I wouldn't be here right now with you guys. So I kind of feel like sometimes I owe it to people to go, Hey, cut the shit. Just keep, just go for it, man. Who cares what everybody thinks? Like, right. like, are you living your life for, for this person or are you doing it? Like make up your mind. Um, so, uh, this is a perfect segue here for, uh, Leonard. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, Leonard? Uh, Leonard. this is, has a lot to, this will Leonard. make sense here. Where are you hailing from, brother, and how old are you? Cincinnati, Ohio, yeah, 31. 31. Yeah, so me and Leonard, we talk a lot, and we met. 
through here. We met on the show. And, um, you know, uh, you know, I got to tell Leonard all the time because he's got it. Why don't you go ahead? And um, this might get a little depressing, but I think some people need to hear this. Uh, Leonard, why don't you go ahead and share with everybody some of some of the issues you have to overcome on a daily basis? Make us uh, feel better about our lives. Where should I start? Wherever you want, man. You tell me. It's your show. Okay. Well, why don't you start with um, some of the health problems you have, and uh, we'll go from there. All right. So I have cerebral palsy, and I ended up with epilepsy. So I'm Ep epileptic. Yeah, so, so you have, so you have, so you, so, so what is cerebral palsy exactly? Um, for people who don't know, cause I'm not, I should probably look it up. It's a birth defect. That a birth defect. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, men, it's a mental, it's like for the brain. So it affected the left side of my brain, which, you know, the left side controls the right side of the body. The right side controls the left side and it damaged part of the left side. So this part of my what? body, the right side. Can you put your microphone a little bit closer? Yeah, right there is perfect. Mm. There you go. Talking, the money yeah, talk, yeah. Talking too loud hurts. Because oh, is I that why lot. is that why your voice changes sometimes? Every minute, because it's I have, of I'm going through VNS therapy, which is a vagus nerve stimulation device that's placed into the body where a uh, pacemaker would be i could show the scar but i don't know it's you you, you don't have to do all yeah. that so i got and they had to cut into my neck to get so you, to put the lead in so is it. that is that why you have that like your voice sounds like almost robotic i was always yeah, wondering that i didn't want to uh, offend you with that uh, it that doesn't thing. offend me people always ask me if i'm like when i'm talking to you know on the phone to somebody it's like i'm talking you know there's some you know, like say like bank or something like that. Well, you, um, well, you know what? In today's day and age, man, you're probably going to freak some people out talking to somebody at Walgreens or something. And you're yeah. going to be talking to some, uh, some lady and she's going to look over at her husband and go, I think this guy might be AI, you know, <laughs> you never, Hey, you should use that yeah. to your advantage. I would freak people out with that. It I does. Freak, it does. Yeah. Freak people out. I'd be and like, um, yeah. I'd be like, so where, where are you? What? You'd be like, I was created at Google. You know what I mean? I'd be I'd be playing with some people. Okay, so you got the cere cerebral palsy. You're epileptic. Um, what other what other stuff? What other terrible well, things? Let's see. Um, I had. I don't know when my camera goes in and out. Even, whatever. You're fine. Stupid. Well, anyway, I uh, have a fainting issue. Due a to fainting silly. issue. Yeah, it's uh, due to being an epileptic and having cerebral palsy. Alongside with that, it goes hand in hand, usually. But I can move, you know, I have full function. It's my mild cerebral palsy. Okay. But, uh, so you can walk and stuff. Yeah, I can walk, run, but over the years, it's taken an effect on my body to where if I push myself too hard, and like taking a shower is even an issue. So people with cerebral palsy have they get they get fatigued about probably ten times faster than a normal, you know, well able body, normal able body person would be, like you yourself. Yeah, I remember so, you told you told me that, but this is kind of going back to like uh just kind of reminding people to you know look at the bright side on things, you know, and, uh, it's kind of hard to look at the bright side when you have cerebral palsy and you faint randomly and you, you're epileptic and you got a robotic, uh, voice and you have a piece yeah. of machinery in your body. Um, yeah. you know, cause I know you have a bunch of thoughts about, uh, I don't want to get too deep here with everybody, but this is, you this might is as well just do that. This, I could do that for you. This, he, he has thoughts of offing himself all the time. Um, yes. And, you know, I don't have to be here talking to Leonard through text message and say, hey, don't do it. Don't just don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. You know, um, I probably would have already done it. 
yeah, don't just, just, just don't, you know, and believe it or not, there's a lot of people here. I get comments on the channel quite a bit of people asking how you've been. So to answer all of those people, if they're watching right um, now, he's alive. And, um, so, so real quick I have? about the, I have uh, about the epilepsy, I got a question about this. So like, so how often do you have like, um, an episode like uh, how often does this happen it it depends say if i'm okay like doing all right and not pushing myself too hard i won't have any ish i won't have a uh, seizure like the fa fainting thing like a faint that's what it's called a seizure that's what i meant yeah to say. seizures yeah so and i won't have that if i'm not pushing myself too hard and sometimes i can go within a week or two weeks at best and no issues okay you, um, um, do you have to go to the hospital every time you have one no i just uh but the yeah, fainting thing if i fall and i if i have to go maybe if i smash the back of my head i have to get staples or something luckily i never oh. had to get stitches but uh recently i had to get uh three staples put into my head the back of my head I smashed it on concrete at my friend's house and my brother took me there. So, you know, that was well, good right. on him. I have on, you know, my identical twin. He brought me there when we were there at our friend's house. And uh, I was right behind him and I was going to open the door and then like that. So what do you, what do you think? Um, so is your family super supportive? Uh, they help you out a bunch? Yeah, they helped me out enough. So well, that's that's good, man. That's really that's that's important. Um, yeah. like like real quick, uh, this dude here, Lucifer says, "Thanks for the twenty bucks, man. I really appreciate that." He goes, "I hate when people say you will fail with a passion or business uh, that you want to start." I've had two businesses that have failed in my entrepreneur career. Uh, my mattress store failed due to COVID, and my landscaping failed uh, business failed also. Well, you know what? It, uh, that's something too. Where, um, uh, wait, I saw some movie once or a show, and uh, the the guy said, uh, "Yeah, my first He said my first business failed, and the lady goes, "Whoa, we don't use the f word around here." She was like, uh, "We call that a a, a pre-attempt at success," and I thought that was awesome because the truth is, is most people are gonna um, eat shit starting their 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 own thing. Um, and that's just the truth. Um, and that's like, so for instance, like Leonard, like what, what, what would you do? What do you want to, what do you want to do with yourself? Um, it's despite all the stuff that's wrong with you. What would you like to do with yourself? Um, if you could like have a career or your passion, like, like what would you want to do? It would be, well, since I'm good with computers, I would, I would go that route. And so, but I was self self taught. I dropped out of college, and uh, but I wasn't going there for that. I was going there to be a cop. And then I realized that you know can't do that. I would never you know because of this issue. Wait, you and wanted I to be a, you said you you wanted to be a cop. So you'd be like mm -hmm. robot cop. Yeah, pretty much having a gun come out of the side of my thigh and go. Yeah, yeah. that's what we need to get you done, man. We need to <laughs> we need to get you some uh, extremities on there, some heavy machinery, dude. Get you get you cooking, bro. I'm just I'm just joking. Yeah, um, we don't need. It's to do all right. That. I don't um, care, right. So. so what the fuck are you talking about? Okay. So, anyways, um, well, that's good. Speaking of. Uh, Leonard, I'm going to put you on ice for a second. We got Chris in here. Speaking of uh, businesses failing, I know, Chris, for all the new people in the stream, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. You've been uh, – he's a personal accountant. He's been a CPA for, what, 30 years, 40, 30 plus years? Uh, well, I've been a CPA for about 30 years now and started doing taxes in college actually in the in the late 80s. Okay, so, so when you first – I'm when, sorry, you, yeah, buddy. when you first started your uh like on your own doing your business um when you started were you afraid of uh of your business failing did you even have that thought 
definitely. I've done some computer work um, that old, you know, when the PCs first came out in the early 80s. So that was a little tenuous. But yeah, going on my own, when I left my firm that I I, I, I came, got into yeah. out of college, I, um, I did quit there, but I did get some hourly work. You know, so that I got some work with another firm. But, um, but, yeah, you know, it's very, very scary. But remember, the best part about it is my fear since I was young was only having one boss, <laughs> one paycheck. So now I have hundreds. So that's the thing to remember. Because now I have hundreds. That's What'd that was say? beautifully. No, that was beautifully put. You said my fear was only having one boss and one paycheck. And now I have hundreds. I thought that was that was beautiful. That and was so awesome. that's, the, that's the benefit is that we want the, the more bosses you can get as a self-employed person, the less desperate you are, the more you can be a fully functioning adult. Right. So it's a lot, a lot of guys on the stream here that you talk to or read your comments. They're smarter than the people they work for. I mean, Jack's had that probably his whole life. You're smarter than everybody you work for. Yeah, you know what sucks is like um, I was talking to another YouTuber friend who he was like, dude, you're like way too humble and all this stuff. And you're um, like you pretend to be this regular guy. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Pretend uh, I go, dude, every job I've ever had, um, every single job, at least one time, probably 10 times at each job, I've had somebody say, what are you doing working here? Right. So I'm like, dude, I know I'm supposed to be doing something else. I know this. But unfortunately, sometimes you got to eat some shit until you figure it out. And, you know, that's how it goes. But um, I thought that was awesome because I've always had two, um, two incomes, so sometimes three. Right. Um, if, 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 if I could just give some advice about if you're looking for work, I deal with the small to medium sized business community. I don't, I don't deal with the big fortune 500 CRT DEI crowd. So what do my entrepreneurs want? A lot of their jobs aren't even listed anywhere. So they can like, they can find people sometimes to do the basic work, but they're looking for people who can work on their own, run a crew. Like my contractors who do framing, for example, they can find the framers, but they can't find a person to run the crew in another location. Or also, they can't find people who could also market. A lot of the guys that talk on here would seem to be such good salespeople. So, so don't sell yourself short. So any entrepreneur you want to talk to, they might have plenty of positions but aren't advertising them. And again, they need people to do the, the basic work, digging a ditch. But, but if you have any skill to run people or are trustworthy, then they really would love to find someone who can work and, you know, in their absence will work out of sight. So keep that in mind. Don't sell yourself short. A lot of guys you've had on here for weeks I've been watching have great experience, are great with people, very personable. And so don't forget to use that sales skill and your management skill you've accumulated um, and, and find an industry where you want to work. I said most of my clients never advertise their jobs. Really? And, yeah, well they're waiting for yeah, now that I think about it, my dad never advertised. Um, he owned his own uh, carpet, tile, mold, uh, restoration business, and he never advertised to hire anybody. So it was always right. like whoever whoever had the – basically, he would meet somebody. If they had – if he liked the way they talked and the way they moved, he would ask them if they were looking for a job. And that's how he hired basically everyone. So that's and, – and that's how I found um, – the job we work at now that was literally the reason why i work at this place is because i simply talk to somebody for right. 10 minutes right. so so for example from within within 10 miles of where you live do a google search of some industry you're interested in no matter what it might be and start calling hey can i talk to the owner i'm interested in working i'm interested in this field i'm interested in maybe being a manager helping you with marketing every entrepreneurial client i have Loves to hear that someone wants to help them with marketing. Remember, because sales is king. If you have the ability to talk to people like Jack does and I do, yeah. that is such a valuable commodity no matter across any industry. So so my, my clients want to hear two things. I'd love to run a division for you or a crew of people. I also would love to be involved in marketing for you. So so those two things. And plus, so do a Google search within 10 or 15 miles of where you live 
and industries that you're interested in and start calling them because there are jobs available that are not cl that, that are not listed anywhere. And another thing too, um, like for instance, uh, somebody I know, they've been wanting to get into the IT field forever, right? Um, but they don't want to start at the bottom of the thing. But here's what happens. It's been 10 years and you're still not in the field and you're still going, where do I start? So I've told this person, I'm like, dude, just go, just hit up all these people and say, Hey, can I, can I start? I won't be able to work for you. Um, uh, you know, just tell them your situation. Like this is, I want to be in this industry. I want to learn, but I'm going to have to have another job while I work for you for this 18 an hour. Cause it's not enough. And I'm like, dude, you're cause he's good with people. He's funny. Um, He's got, and he knows what he's doing with computers. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, most people would hire you just because you're, you're good to talk with. And then if you know how to do the job even better and just be honest, like, I can't believe how easy being honest with some of these people are. It's like ridiculous. You know, like if I really wanted to go and do a different career, like let's say I wanted to get into HVAC or get into, you know, sales, let's say I wanted to go sell, uh, helicopters right no they're selling selling choppers uh, uh, what's that from step uh yeah, yeah. step Helicopter brothers, yeah. leasing yeah yeah so let's say i wanted to do that i'd be like all right let me just call these people up i'll, I'll work for you for free at least like exactly. for a little bit you know like just just show me the ropes and then i'll be like as long as i can get out of here by five so i can go to my bartending gig because i'm gonna need money you know, but I'm sure if I hit up enough people, I don't know how many places are selling helicopters. I'm just kind of using that, but you get the point. I'm sure if you called enough people, you know, you might have to move. You might have to leave your city, um, but I'm sure you could get something. I'm sure it would happen. Uh, I think just a lot of us are afraid to ask, you know, um, I was. So, for example, in your computer, computer programming job, they definitely need customer service people who are conversant in basic tech. You know, so that's a good entry level position to get into. Plus, it relates to sales. Remember, sales, the best salespeople are the last ones fired. That's what I always see. So oh, remember, so so if you have like people. everyone here that comes on here is, is willing to talk. They're very personable. So we need my clients need people that can answer the phone and be left alone to deal with customer needs. I can find a million people to program you know, overseas locally. That's a but I need, a, I need an American English speaking person who can handle my customer service. And there's no better way to learn the ropes of a job than dealing with the customer service issues. Right, Jack? That's the best way to learn the it's ins and outs true. of what's happening. That's so, actually so, perfectly, perfectly put, actually. And you really and, think and about so, it. So there, again, just to restate, most of my clients don't advertise. They'll make a position for you. Right, Jack? If someone comes to you, comes to me. People have walked in my office. I don't, I don't advertise my positions. I've hired them on the spot. So, so remember, most of the jobs that I know from entrepreneurs, so I like to work with small to medium-sized entrepreneurs because they're serious. There's no DEI. There's no inclusion. It's all about merit and getting things done. One thing that they, don't, that they can't do well for themselves is market and do customer service because that doesn't make them a lot of money all, right away. So just be mindful that don't sell yourself short. Anyone I've seen that, that have come on here could easily do customer service and sales for any company. So when you, when you try to get a job, make sure you say, I, want, I also want to be able to talk to your marketing manager because I want to be involved in your marketing strategy as well. That, yeah, marketing so impressive. That's so impressive. Wait, wait, go back to that 20. My bad. I wanted to yeah, read yeah. that. Um, hold on. Hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. One second. My bad, Lewis. I didn't mean to put you off like that. Thanks for another 20, dude. Thank you so much. Very, very generous of you. He goes, uh, I still have uh, my his real estate company and his rental properties, construction contractors, and broker transportation services. Yeah, see, he's got a bunch of different – It's it's, but like for instance, like this guy, right? Let's say you know this dude, and let's say you, you know him kind of well. You're not friends, but you know him enough. Everybody knows somebody – with a with a business of some sort like yeah. most people most people know someone you know like I, I i know several people yeah we're not best friends or nothing 
but I could easily get in contact with them. And worst case scenario, you shoot your shot. And like Chris said, some people, they're, they're not hiring. Like there's no post about them hiring, but um, I'm sure if you knocked on enough doors and called enough people and offered and, and you really want to learn, they're going to know. They're going to know. Like if someone came to me, right, and was like, hey, I really want to work with you and I'll, I'll do whatever it takes and, and I'll know if they're bullshitting me or not. You know what I mean? Like I'll know. Um, and if they're really about it, they'll do it for free for a while. Um, because that's not what I could do for them. It's what they could do for me. And then the same thing with this right here, it's this whole video stuff and comedy and putting out these videos. Like it's more for you guys than it is for me, even though I want to make money off it. Yeah, sure. Is it for me? Yes. But at the end of the day, I'm not making videos so that I can watch my own videos. I'm not. I'm not making videos here so that I could sit home later tonight and watch myself on the TV. Wow. So it's for you guys. That's when I, I say that. That's what I mean. So it's the same shit with, with any business, you know, like uh, this guy, Lucifer here, his rental properties. Yeah. They're his rental properties so he can make money, but the people are renting them for them. It's actually for the people. So that's kind of, that's how money works. It's like, you got to be able to that you got to be able to sell them something that they need. Um, no one's just going to come up to you. I guess homeless people are an exemption. People just give them money for nothing, really. Uh, that's really the only exception. That's really the only business model out there where you don't need to sell anything. Just be homeless. Other than really, that, you know, yeah, it's I, all I about a really good type of company to look at is property managers. That they're, they're great. They're companies that usually are looking for people that want entry level, learn something new. Those, that, that's a really great business to get into property management. You're going to learn all about rental properties, commercial and residential. I do a lot of that work. Um, so, so if you have any of those in your, in your, in your area, again, they're not advertising. And remember, I've never seen anybody in my whole life. I've dealt with tens of thousands of hires. It's not a racial issue. It's not a gender issue. My guys don't care if you're trans and a Muslim and face Mecca five times a day. They just want you to come in and answer the phone. They'll give you a dress to wear. They don't care. So that's why dealing, <laughs> that's why, that's why keeping that's out of the fortune up. 100 is great because I've never had one client in my entire life since 1987 say, I don't want to hire, hire a woman or hire a person of color because what happens is let's say you have a, you're a Polish plumber. And you only want to hire Polish plumbers and the Lithuanian plumbers better. He goes to work for your competitor next door. You're out of business. So in my world, you can you have to deal with merit. Can you do the work? They don't care who, what, what, where your background is. And if anyone wants to, they can always send me a resume. I'm always willing to take a look at those. I do a lot of writing and a lot of cover letters. So you can send me a message with a, your document, and I'll try to polish up a resume and help you if you want, to, and, and to make your, your cover letter really stand out. So if you're a Jack subscriber, I'll definitely will help you with that. You heard it, guys. Anybody looking for an opportunity? He's also in the Jersey area. I'm not sure if you could offer... Uh, remote positions, but um, uh, real quick, like uh, Mark over here for everybody in the chat. Mark, why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself? How old are you? Where are you from? So I'm Mark, and I'm from Tennessee. That's where I'm hey. currently live in the old Tennessee. And there's a bunch of New York people and people from the, the West Coast moving here. Oh, yeah, including me. I, I went from California. I lived in Tennessee for a little bit um, in Knoxville. Hey, that's where it's at, man. Where are you at? Um, like 80 miles from Knoxville, going west. It's this place called Cookville. Doubt you heard of it. I, uh, no, no, no. I know, I know Cookville. Yeah, oh, I was in um, Cookville. Wow. Amazed because I was in um Farragut, which is like uh west Knoxville, a little out towards that way. So yeah, I I met a lot of people that were. I actually knew some people that were from Cookville. So oh wow. Yeah, it's yeah. out there. Though. I guess this little spot's growing. They call it like the the secret spot of the South, or not the South, but like for Middle Tennessee, it's a secret. And now oh, like, yeah. everybody's moving here, and the secrets like exposed. Because yeah, it's 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 all uh, the the uh, many many cats are out of the bag at this point with all locations, all the spots that were like secret gems, cheap to live. It's all done with, you know. <laughs> 
but but you know what luckily i i have faith in people like i think people are going to be just fine um you know the people who are like i'm gonna win no matter what and winning doesn't when i say win or success i don't mean like get loaded and famous and rich i mean winning in just a sense of like i'm not gonna let this ruin my life i'm gonna get ahead and i'm gonna be okay that's all i mean by winning i don't um i, I kind of want to clarify that because a lot of people when you say success or winning it's like you know um someone who's making 70k a year doing something they want to do that's winning to me yeah. you know somebody somebody making fifty five thousand a year doing something they want to do and you never hear them bitch about money ever that's that's winning to me um people who are yeah. always bitching about money i'm like dude do something about it already like like please for the love of god i know everyone has these people in their lives um yeah. i know i su surely do and i i it just gets to the point where i'm like dude it's been three years figure it the fuck out already go work every single day i don't care like you care if i butt in yeah butt in Get um in with something i used to be like one of those kind of people that was like oh i can't do this and stuff like that one of my cousin in laws <laughs> i guess you could call him he married my my cousin but something he told me that stuck with me for years if you don't like how something is change it and that Fighting just that just clicked it just clicked in my head i'm like i could just change my situation like yeah, <laughs> I could just change my oh, yeah. situation. Oh, like, I agree. Who, who would have thought? You got to take the steps, but yeah, you, it can be done. Who would have? Who would have thought? I mean, there's certain situations like uh, Leonard over here. He can't necessarily just go. No, no more seizures for me. <laughs> nah, right. you know, like there are situations like that. But you know, uh, I, like me and Leonard, we talk on pills all day long. Yeah, he's 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 fully he's stoned out of his mind right now. Um, but like for instance, you know, he started because uh, he likes video games. He started a, a Twitch stream. Leonard, why don't you go ahead and put your 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 at name and for your Twitch in the um, chat? I'll check um, you know, you know that's something I we were talking about. I was like. I was like, dude, you're always playing video games when you start streaming. He's like, oh, I don't know who will watch me. I'm like, somebody will. Oh, Fuck they it, will. Just, just start doing it. Oh, yeah. I'm like, he's already became a regular on here. He's not on every Sunday, but he comes in here like, Leonard, you know, if you stay alive and don't do anything stupid, you know, a year from now, you're going to have a lot of people who know who you are. And next thing you know, you're like, oh, wow, well, people know me, you know, and it, it, you, your whole life can change just by, you know, if me and him, never talked to each other at the skate park that one time you know i would have missed out on a on an amazing friendship you know what i mean like yeah. um yeah. like i have some amazing friends in my life but like you always have like i got my best friend nick and we, we have our little thing and then you know i got my cousin who's like my best friend and we have our thing and then me and taco it's like we all have this like this they have the special place where Sometimes I go, man, could you imagine if I just never um, met this person or never even talked to them? Like, uh, yeah. I couldn't see my life without these certain people. So um, I kind of forgot where I was even going with that. I don't know. But um, I think I think sometimes things do happen for a reason. Of course. And, uh, you yeah. know, being willing to talk. Oh, if you're willing to talk to some strangers sometimes, um, some strange stuff does happen. Sometimes not the best things. But sometimes some really cool, cool things happen. But anyway, so Mark, so you used to be that guy, right? You want to go a little deeper on that? So when that um, thing switched in your head of, of, oh man, I can't ever get ahead or I can't do this. So when that switched, um, how long do you think it took you to, you know, was it a year, two years, three years? And then like, how did that all work? Because now it seems like, when I talk to you, you got like no worries in the world and life's amazing to you. That's what I hear every time I talk to you. I mean, it, it's got its rough spots. Don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah, of it's course. just, you know, it's it's all about how you you, you take those curveballs of life. Oh, you know, absolutely. It's all about how you take them. But uh, what worked for me, it didn't work like in a year or two years because this is around the time, I want to say 2012. Yeah, and how old are you? Just to paint context. 30, 31. Okay, okay. Solid. Um, this was around like 2012, and um, I got laid off from a job 
in 2011 and in in 2012 uh, I did some repoing on the side for one oh, of nice. my friends local businesses and that went to crap because uh my friend that I was repoing with his dad was retiring he didn't want to take the business over which I totally respected why because he had his second daughter on the way and I was like dude it's a dangerous business anyways yeah but after a while I was just unemployed I had to move back in with my grandma and stuff like that I was just all this depressed and stuff but I was talking to my cousin-in-law if you would call him that and he kind of said that one thing and so it just kind of clicked to me and so I just started making moves to like get myself out of this rut you know it's like hey I'm able to do this whatever ended up you know getting a job and pretty much took off from there but it it wasn't an overnight thing but i had to stay steadily at it just chipping away at it yep yep that's but that's how that's how it goes like um especially uh cuz you know you hear a lot of this like get rich talk on the internet and thanks for te the 10 bucks uh jackson i really appreciate that um you hear a lot of like you got all these gurus online and um i'm no guru but i but i do know how to be a guy with no actual specific skills other than talking and making a decent amount of people laugh not everyone's going to get it uh that's that's how life works but with no real actual skills i can i could say that um if anybody's willing to literally go to work get off of work and work some more um uh, and they're willing to do that seven days a week for a year, sometimes even over that, uh, I could guarantee you it, it, that can work for literally anybody. Uh, for the most part, as long as you're, uh, have an able body and you, you know, obviously there's some things where if you, you know, have a hard time walking or something like that, but if you're a regular person who could just move around, you could talk, you could walk, you're relatively healthy. Anybody can, can, get ahead oh, and yeah. i don't care if you have to put your dreams off for two years um you know get just fucking suck it up work seven days a week have two jobs i don't recommend three that's a little much you, you'd probably just be better off with two I jobs saying, i did that yeah. um and it was just like what you're saying jack like you talk to people and you just get an opportunity to do a job so i was working at this gas station and I was helping my friend on the side at this hookah lounge because I used to be yeah. bigger. I used to be like 280 and stuff doing. Door. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I used lost to. lost a lot you know, of weight. Yeah, I lost a crap ton. But like uh, I used to sit there, like put on wristbands, put X's on your hands. If you're a minor, check your ID if you can go inside the hookah lounge. I used to do that. But just from talking to people, I, I came across this one lady. It's like, hey, I need someone to help me clean mansions. I could say I've done that. Like I used to like. <laughs> Clean, clean mansions dances. and stuff. It's like I've been in some really Cookville's got some really nice houses that no one like talks about. But like it's just you oh, know yeah. who you talk to and who you can build a rapport with and stuff like that can really help your odds too and just picking up stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, like this guy Chuck here, he goes, I worked six days a week at Pepsi for three years. It about killed me, but it definitely got me really ahead. Yeah, and that's kind of like you know, I'm not sitting here preaching, I'm I'm hoping everybody in the comment section and everybody who's watching um, has somewhat got it together. I, I hope that for everybody, but if you're sitting there, like how, how come I can't get ahead or like you're stuck at a certain number um, or you're worried about what you're going to do for the rest of your life. Uh, I'm going to tell you a really good distraction and it only lasts for a little while. But if you do this right here with this guy, Chuck just said, um, I would up that to seven days a week. And I would just do it for at least a year. And if you do that for a whole year and your bank account hasn't gone up and your attitude hasn't gone up a little bit, um, then I, I, I don't see that happening. I don't think that's even a possibility. I think it, yeah. that's exactly what's going to happen. Your bank up. account's going to go up and then you're going to feel better about yourself. But that's what I tell people. I'm like, look, you could put your dream on hold for a little bit, whatever your dream is, just put it on ice. You know, I've, I've, I put my dream on ice several times, but sometimes you got to get to that point, you know, um, like doing this. Now I kind of said to myself, I go, look, I'm going to really grind my dick off. I'm going to get a shit ton of money set up and then I'm going to quit my job 
and I'm just going to do this for X amount of time, three to six months. And I'm willing to go down, you know, 10, 15 grand. I'm willing to lose it um, and really put the time and energy because that's what it happens. You get ahead. Um, if you've never had 20, 50, 20 grand, 50 grand, 100 grand in the bank, I highly recommend you do it because then you could actually take a risk and start working towards something you actually want to do um, or somewhat even want to do, you know, um, if that makes any sense. Uh, this guy goes, I understand needing to focus on your life and improve your life, but at some point we need to fix the macro problems. Yeah, I get it. I want to enjoy life too. I, I, I totally understand. I, I don't want to have to work um, seven days a week. I don't want that. Oh, no. Not at all. Do you want that? No. No. Oh, no one, no one wants that. I think, I think it would be awesome if you could just work 40 hours a week and call it a day. I wish that was the case. And it still can be the case. But like Chris, you own your own business, right? How many hours yes. a week you think? How many hours a week you think you work on average? Off season, sixty to seventy. Wow. <laughs> off season. That's off wow. season. Wow. Yeah. Boy, boy. So so that's kind of the the only downside to what's going on with the macro problems, is the people who make serious money generally work a shit ton um that's how it is and yeah, like, it's like your job becomes your life yeah so like with this with what i'm doing now um you can't you can't turn it it's hard to turn it off it's really hard to turn off um your business it's like kind of um i guess having a kid i've never had a kid but i i could imagine having a kid it's kind of hard to especially just shut it shut, just shut it off and go I'm going to not be a parent for the next five hours. I'm pretty sure that's kind of hard right, to do. Exactly. That's the same I, thing I, I, with I the tell business. My, I, tell my, I tell my entrepreneurs, you got to go 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. five days a week. That's, at you least, know, and, and I, I mean, and then I, and I, I like, for example, I was in my office today. <clears> I, I need to meet new clients. They're busy all week. I'll come on on a Sunday. Like I spent two hours in my office today with a new client meeting. So you have to be able to fill if you have, if you have to be able to fill up your time. If you do, if you don't have, if you, you might need two jobs, but, but if you want to get ahead, you got to work more than 40 hours a week. No doubt about it. If you want to be, do more than break even. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, but, but that's also kind of where I'm going with this is not everybody like, yeah, I don't want to work, um, a, a, every day, all day. I don't want to do that either. Uh, but unfortunately we live in a, uh, unless you could lock down a job where you could magically work 40 hours a week and make a substantial income, that's awesome. Go for it. But that's why I'm like, I'm going to do this. And even though I not might not be working like crazy hours like Chris is, um, it's still an everyday thing that you kind of, it's always there. You're always thinking about it. You just um, have you to might, do it. You might get a few hours where you can shut it off completely. It does happen. But or when you're sleeping, sometimes you get bad dreams about it, though. I'm not going to front. But um, <laughs> yeah, you get some. Yeah, it's weird. It's going to happen. But oh. that's kind of that's kind of where we're at in society, right. though. Uh, but the cool thing is, is if you just do it for a while, it won't have to be forever. And, and if, you, if I could just inter if I could interject, remember, my, my path is. You want to you want to work for a smaller company because they're usually entrepreneurs. <clears throat> So if you have any, any entrepreneurial desire, that's one of the best moves you can make because eventually it's going to lead you to doing it on your own. And so I'm, I have such enthusiasm. I've been doing this since 1987 because it's mine. So I, I don't think I work enough because I, I love it. So once, once you establish it's your own, they're my own clients. I can't be fired anymore. I pick who I want to work with. So instead of going for, to a major company, even go with a smaller company, they love to show you the ropes because they, they, they would love you to grow with them and become an equity player. So like, for example, there's, there's a need for handyman services, really big need for it. Handymen are out there. They're getting all their, they want an assistant right now to pay you minimum wage, but they're going to teach you the ropes. There's so much work out there. Handymen are dying slowly. They're not being replaced. So if you have, if, if you're good with your hands and you're good with people, so in, in that, that that's going to lend itself to having your own handyman business. So just try to take my advice, at least look into 
the small to medium sized firms where you're dealing directly with the owner because that's going to give you an insight into running your own entrepreneurial shop, eventually being on your own like me to have more than one boss. I could lose half my bosses and I'm OK. Yeah, that was that was my goal. But, but and also what I really took away from what you just said is I've said this before. I go, if you've never done anything to create your own income, um, cause this isn't the first time where I've created the do this and I'm making my own money in a sense, right? This isn't the first time I've done this. My first time was when I was 17. It was with weed. I don't care if it was illegal. It was still a learning. You're still learning that. Oh, wow. I can actually create my own income here. All right. Yeah. It backfired on me. I got arrested for it, all that, but I learned something from that. And then that showed me ever since then, since I'm 17, I've always been selling something, a service or a good, right. always. Was I able to be full-time with all of them? No. But when I had my resale business, like the stuff you see behind me, that was all stuff I kind of just kept um, that I was going to sell, but I was like, I kind of just like it. I'm going to hang on to this. Um, you know, that was another thing where I was actually full-time with that. And it's something that there's a different feeling. It's like, yeah, I got to work a shit ton, but it's a different feeling when it's like, I did that. I pulled Very that well, well, if I'm, I'm making all the profit, not my, not a boss. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's a whole, it's a whole different story. Remember my, I tell everyone if it, if a company has an HR department, it's probably too big. Wait, what Little was that? Say that one more time. If a company has a human resources department, it might be too big. No, I, I, <laughs> we joke about that. Cause now I think our, restaurant we were at they didn't have hr but now i think they do have hr and i was like oh right. no i was like this doesn't look good because i because like it's not i'm not saying corporate's bad i'm not saying that but um there is something special like like taco's here with me right now right is he making any money no but will he yeah he will but he's gonna see over this time that we do this and it grows i guarantee you the moment he realizes oh if i start taking the liberty to go post all this stuff over here because Jack doesn't have the time to do it or he doesn't feel like it. Uh, and he takes the charge to do that. And then he sees just because he did that. Now we're making an extra three grand, five grand, however much money a month, because he decided to go and do the extra work. It's going to feel as if he just did that. It's not even going to feel like I did it. He's going to be like, no, Jack actually didn't do that. He just talked and filmed it. And if I never went and posted it over here and over here and over here, it's like that's something that um, there's yeah, something really rewarding Steve, about it. Steve, Steve Fanslow, I just put my email in the chat on the YouTube. So don't forget, how many how many of us have dealt with bosses or managers that, you know, don't have our best interest at heart? Oh. And, and you know that you know they don't care about our, about our success. When you go with a small to medium sized company, they they want you to succeed. They, they they have skin in the game right away. So so there's none of that BS management. It doesn't work that way. So like I said, and I I can help with resumes and just basic advice. I I do a lot of this work. All I do is run businesses every day. So I'm a good resource and, for Jack subscribers for anything and, you might and, need. And, and Chris, real quick, uh, and thank you, Steve, for the 10 bucks, man. I appreciate that. You and uh, Chris definitely need to link up. Um, but real quick, we've got um, we've got our boy BK in here. Uh, can you hear me, brother? What's up, Jack? Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm doing great, man. Um, so real quick, Chris, maybe this is a perfect time for BK here. Do you have um, – BK, uh, why don't you explain to everybody in the chat and also to Chris your situation and uh, Chris is – offering to help some people out here so maybe you can you guys can do yeah, this live yeah, for sure um at first i want to say at first i wasn't going to come on the live because i didn't want to keep depressing everybody week after week no let's but, get depressed um, <laughs> <laughs> but i wanted to say congratulations jack and i also um wanted to let the uh gentleman know um i'm I having trouble remembering your name now the gentleman with cerebral palsy oh that's leonard Leonard, um, I didn't tell Jack this before. Uh, I told him I had a disability, but I didn't tell him before. I also have cerebral palsy. So I want you to know, you know, you're not the only one out there. You're not the only one struggling. Wow. Um, small small world. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jack knows a little bit of my story. Um, I'll share it. Um, I got laid off from my job. 
about eight months ago now, I want to say. And then my wife got fired from her job uh, two months ago. So we're behind on all our bills. Um, things are pretty bad. Uh, it's looking like my car is about to get repoed. I'm about to be evicted. Things are pretty terrible. Um, so I what, pretty real much quick, to real, real quick though. That's all shitty as all hell. I'm so sorry about that. Um, we're, we're all rooting for you, but real quick, what, what you said you were working <laughs> remotely. Um, yeah. what my, my question is, is what exactly were you doing? Uh, remotely was a customer service. Like what exactly was it? Just cause Chris I here have experience in both. Um, the last job I was doing was customer service with Blue Cross and Blue Shield. But I have okay. I have experience in customer service. I've done sales and I've also done digital marketing. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Chris here is a very, very uh, cool dude. And he, he helps people for a living. That's how he gets paid. So um, what I want you to do is, is I'm going to send you his um, information on Instagram. I'll go ahead and DM it to you. Mm -hmm. uh, but you definitely need to link up with Chris and at least try and see something. So, Chris, do you think I'm not saying Chris is for sure going to be able to help you. But, Chris, do you think you could you have anybody out there who would need a remote customer service person? It's definitely possible, and I have a, a big network of clients and contacts and colleagues. So it's always good to get me a resume, like I said. But you know, you, you definitely DM my information. I can definitely yeah, give them sure. some some great direction. My wife is also a property manager. I don't know if you'll be able to help there as well. But my wife is a, is a property. Where do you manager. live? I'm in uh, Monroe, North Carolina. It's about forty five okay. minutes to an hour outside of Charlotte. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Yeah. Just if you want to both send me your resumes, then we could talk offline. You know, give me a call tomorrow or Tuesday after I see the resumes, and I'll do the best I can to help. If you're both, especially yeah. if you're willing to work remotely, and you have some good experience already, do you have any letters of, of recommendation or references that someone? I can have check? a lot of references. I don't have uh, letters of recommendation, but I'm sure I can get them to you if you need them. Hey, okay, Anthony. Yeah, uh, Anthony, real quick, what was your Instagram, real fast, so I can send this over to you? Yeah, it's under my real name. It's uh, Anthony Jaboyo. Last name is G I B O Y E A U X. I think there's Don't go stalking here. me on the internet, guys. My last name is so rare; only people related to me have it. So please don't no. go stalking me and my family we're, on we're the not, internet. I, we're, we're, are, we're are, are you bilingual? Stalking. Are you bilingual? Unfortunately, no. Okay, now it's great. Just like to know. It's an important question. I'm trying to find your damn Instagram, bro. Go fuck. How are you spelling Anthony? Did I type -N 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 in Anthony? A-N-T-H-O-N-Y. Oh, there's no E in it. Anthony, just send me a DM so you're at the top of my DMs. I got too many damn Yeah, things. I got you. I, I, I got to respond no to so many of you. Oh, shout out to Dan Sparks in the chat, man. He's all the way in Bangkok. He never catches the lives. That's my I boy am right Puerto there. Rican with a French last name. I see that in the chat. I am Puerto Rican with a French last name. It's the classic, the French Puerto Rican. Can't get much better. Anyways, guys, we're going to wind down the show. We're hitting about three hours here. I'm tapping out. Um, I appreciate everybody being here. Uh, Leonard, you got any uh, last words before we wrap up? What's your uh, what's your your goal? Uh, if you have one goal to do for the next year, what would it be? I'd say just to keep pushing. Not All right, man. Well, you can, I, can I interject one more piece of advice? Do it. All right, great. So remember, tax season's coming. So you have a lot of the made there are major, major tax systems that are, you know, TurboTax, HR Block, Jackson, you you at Liberty, and some of the majors like CCH. So remember, they really need customer service reps, even, even, even you know, trainees. So that's a really good place to look. If you want to work remotely, if you if you see like you know, this gentleman speaks perfectly. Um, so do they just want people that can answer the phone to answer some basic questions? Remember, a lot of the remote workers now they have access to an online system where the major FAQs come up. So, so, so if you're going to be looking, they they're starting to hire people for tax season at least from January to May. You're going to be very busy if you get a job there. Just want to give, I I know that they're they're dying to hire people right now to get them trained for tax season. Just a little piece of advice. 
Excellent. Excellent. I saw All a right. couple of those, but I thought you had to be like a tax expert to work at those types of places and taxes no, aren't no, no. exactly. You have, you have to remember that what happens is the first line of customers, there's tiers. Everyone's heard to, you know, put me to tier two to tier three. So the tier ones are, are trained and there's usually, you know, there's some frequently asked questions, keywords where you can get them some basic information and it's all in their system, right? It's all data-based. So you could be home and someone could call, hey, I have a depreciation problem. You might be able to find them the answer. If not, you go to the next tier. So they need tons and tons of people at that first tier just to give someone a voice on the end of the phone and not an AI voice. So just have the confidence. Of course, just tell them, I'm willing to learn whatever I need to do initially. And then, you know, just, just they want someone who's fluent in English, someone that's going to be available, that's going to be conscientious and is willing to learn. Yeah, Anthony, you're gonna you might have to bullshit your way through this shit, man. You're gonna have yeah, to Yeah, I mean I just, pretty I much what I've been doing, you know, at yeah. all my call center jobs, just fake it till yeah. I make it, you know. Confidence is yeah, key. Dude. Just get just get in there, man. Honesty works too. Just go, look, I don't know anything about this, but but I'll 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 be an asset. You'll see. Anyways, uh, Anthony, thanks for coming on, brother. Well, you've got this. I just text you Chris's uh Instagram. Yeah, I saw that thanks, man. Um, and, uh, we already know what your goal is here. So you got to get a job or somebody said you need three jobs, but at least get you one. And, um, thanks for coming on, brother. I'm gonna get you out of here. Leonard. I love you, man. Everybody's rooting for you. Tell him to type in his Twitch. Oh yeah. Leonard, put your Twitch in the chat for everybody. Just in case anybody uses Twitch. Yeah. Um, and, uh, Chris, I appreciate you, brother. You always coming in here, laying down the law. It, it, <laughs> It, it's uh, definitely needed. Anybody needs tax advice, definitely hit Chris up. It's uh, Chris Whalen um, on Instagram as well. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate everybody being here, all the new people that have come in. Really stoked. Hit the 20K mark. It's uh, it's awesome. Here's Leonard's Good. Twitch, Good. Z Ninja yeah. 101. Oh. Anybody it's underscore, need... underscore 101. Uh, Z Ninja there underscore 101. And uh, God damn, hell of a stream, guys. Hell of a talk. Yeah. We're going to wrap Pretty it up. Good. I appreciate all of you. What's up, Leonard? All right. Keep going and keep pushing uh, is all I can say. I, I, I'm not, I can't give in. My job isn't done yet as a Christian. Hey. I'm trying to, put, I'm trying to push everybody closer good to God. Man. You got, hey. you got great energy. I can't Let give in if God is not, if I'm still alive, as long as I'm still alive, I can still learn. And I'm not hey, Leonard. It doesn't. Yeah. Just, just something's coming. Just wait it out. That's what I'm doing. Whatever right. God is telling me to do, I'll do. Hey, hell of a talk, guys. Good, good stuff. I'll see you manana. See you. Later.